MSI is done, and we're all so happy to just be moving on with our lives. It's Hotline League episode 174. I'm joined right now by my constant host, Mark Zimmerman. How's it going, Mark? Good. Are you going to lose? Making... Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Are you going to lose that backdrop whenever uh, eventually you guys all have to go back into the studio? I don't know. I If, it, if I, I feel do, like I you buy one. Yeah, because I, I know you do that to hide uh, your... He's not back so, there right now. Okay, but but some 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 sometimes she'll be there. I just wanted no to say on behalf of all the callers, all the people in chat, everyone, congratulations on your four year anniversary. I I saw on Twitter, and I am really happy for you. Yeah, four years with this guy. It's been an incredible yes. time. Yeah, I can't get enough of him. Papa was so disgusted he's already left. Uh, <laughs> Wait, did she have that cat when you met her? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that cat's been there the whole time. Mm-hmm. Is that, I assume that's a major factor in the continuation of the relationship. <laughs> it's it's like when people stay together through, it's like actually you guys children. can't stay each other, <laughs> but you want to stay there for the children. <laughs> no, no. Otherwise she'd be log not. out of there. She'd be gone. No, no, of course not, Travis. Well, either way, uh, what were you going to say? You were going to say something. Oh, I was writing the tweets. That's why I was not responding to your like, what are you up to this week? Kind of. Well, what question. have you been up to this week, Mark? What have you been doing since you, like, literally it's just been hot tub streams, really. So what yeah, I mean, there, like, I, you've watched you've the seen me every guys, day. But, yeah. You didn't see me yesterday. But I don't know uh, what you've been doing. Um. So here's something we started doing. We started rewatching Game of Thrones finally. It's been like, I don't know what, two, three years it's, we're, tr- we're trying it out. It's hard not to get mad when every single character arc ends up fucking sucking. And you're like, oh, man, I love this character right now. But then you're like, but then I remember Arya turns into like a little teleporting assassin. Well, spoilers. For no reason. No one cares. I think I think I people don't. care. I, I don't want to just assume I'm helping people... you. I am, I am helping you by spoiling that show. Because otherwise, you're going to have hopes and dreams about it. No, no. And it's, it's just fucking just trash. Tra- so, Mark, if you don't put out your tweet, I'm just going to retweet this this happy for you anniversary to Mark Z. You could do that. You just put a link at the end. Quote retweet with a link. I'm working on it. You asked me what I was doing. I can't do both. My brain's too small. I need you to multitask. All right, whatever. While you're figuring that out, how are you doing, Pabu? I'm all right. Um, I've had my setup for like a half a day now, so I finally stopped sitting in bed for like what like 60 hours straight or something, but. Yeah, do you want to tell everybody schedules. what your situation is? So, to get back into Australia, you have to do a full, like, two-week quarantine in a hotel. And the hotel to put us up in, uh, this room is giga small. Like, you see the room behind me? That's basically all there is. There's, like, no floor space. <laughs> um, so, it's been pretty cooked. Um, and my sleep schedule coming back from Iceland was already, like, a bit out of whack, but when you don't have anything to do, it just kind of, uh, you go a bit loopy for sure. So, I've been been sitting around watching YouTube and stuff for like, I don't know, a good three days straight. Well, Amazing we talked last week and you said yeah. you'd be down to come on a hotline league. And then you messaged me two days ago and you're like, I don't have a computer. Well, so basically everywhere else, it's super easy to get like your computer into quarantine. I don't know why that it's like hard to get shit in because like, I'm like the infectious thing, right? Like I, I'm supposed to be kept away from people. You're not supposed to keep things away from me. Like, I don't know why they would be worried about something coming in. But for some reason, this hotel specifically and Melbourne specifically is like, not you. You can't like bring stuff in, and so we had to go like up the chain of command and get like approval to have like our PCs brought in. Um, and like that was unforeseen. It, it's not normal. It's supposed to be pretty easy, so mm-hmm. that's why it was like, yeah, I I only just got the PC in. Well, I'm sure that feels nice. I'd be going crazy if I didn't have an amazing Alienware computer with me in a in a. Our hotel room also shout out to Gamefield, both of them sponsoring this episode uh but what uh what, what youtube videos did you watch did you did you watch any any wrecks yeah, that you're I just sent charging you? your phone constantly i definitely went through probably about half of them um i, I watched like a, a good chunk of every frame of painting um it was extremely enjoyable um, and the the game dev guy i can't remember his matthew something or whatever like matthew that, that guy. oh god that's yeah, nice yeah, guy no. It, it, it was extremely enjoyable content. Um, I think I probably watched all through like his like Dark Souls and um, uh, whatever the game is where it's 
the guy on the planet where he, he wobbles when he carries his stuff. Oh yeah. Um, Fuck. No, no Travis's okay. favorite game, Death Stranding. Oh, Death Stranding. Death Stranding. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about like on a, it sounded like an alien planet. What the guy oh, who I mean, wobbles when he carries his stuff. Anyway, sorry, continue. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I've yeah, smashed through all that content for sure, but now that I have my PC, it's no longer so uh, mind-numbing. I can finally game. I'm just glad that you watched some, because Travis and I both have our favorite game reviewers, and we're always trying to tell everyone that the other person's is better than each other's, so he, he likes Tim Rogers, I like Matthew Matosis, and we're always just like, no, 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 the other guy's trash, don't watch his stuff, watch my guys, it's way better. <laughs> well, you've probably, I mean, you've probably watched a ton of Every Frame of Painting too, right, Mark? Oh, yeah, but I recommend that, too, for everyone. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, like, did you, it seemed like this was, he's like, it seemed like you get, sent him a list of YouTube videos and series to watch. Basically, I did, yes. <laughs> Wait, have you guys talked before? No, oh, okay. I don't think so. Maybe well, we have at, like, Vegas or something, but I don't remember. Yeah, well. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, nothing comes to mind. I should have just assumed that you guys had had conversations with each other previously instead of just now you've, you're interacting for the first time. Well, good job because I didn't even realize it until just now. Anyway, uh, how wait? So, okay, how many days do you have to be in there? Um, it's fourteen in total, and so I think yeah, I've been in here for like three or four. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, depends when they start counting, I guess, because we got in at like nine p.m. Um, but yeah, That's so weird. it's like a, it's a long fucking time. Like two weeks is a is a really long time, and especially for people that don't have like a computer. Like I can't imagine what it would be like just. Be, being like a normie like having like jack shit to do yeah like, yeah that would be I, it's pre pretty crazy how much is like the room cleaning fee because like how great would it be to get something like a permanent marker and just start doing like that kind of just scribbling on the walls and so when they finally come let you out you just have the entire walls covered in like incoherent ramblings about solo queue from eu west and shit I have no idea, but it's fucking expensive to do this like normally. Like it's like it's like three k AUD or something to be here. Like it, it costs oh the same God. as like being in a hotel. I mean, because you are in a hotel, right? It's essentially a hotel. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It, it is a hotel. I mean, they don't they don't clean my room or anything. They don't come in, but it's, it's the same. What do they? And then do do you get to choose? Do you order from a menu, or are they just like, here's your? They food. just drop us off food twice a day. Yeah. Well, you can get Uber Eats as well, so it's not the worst, but. All right. Well, uh, hang in there, buddy. We, Mark and I have some books to recommend if you uh, if you ever need any books. <laughs> we have a long list of books that we can recommend. Uh, as for me, because Mark never asks uh, how my week's been, uh, I've been playing Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and I, I've it's great to go back and play these games. I think I have to say that I got this game for free, by the way. They're not paying me for this, though. Uh, but it's great to go back and, and play them, and I just beat Mass Effect 1 last night, and so on to Mass Effect 2 as of today. And, uh, I, I man, I really like those games. And they did such a good job with with bringing them up to par that I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. And yesterday I just kind of took the day off. I mean, I streamed the press conferences and I, I watched finals, but I I think Mark and I were like, eh, people, people are kind of over MSI, uh, which I think is something we can talk about, well, I don't know. It seems kind of like a downer topic. To, we'll get into it. We're not going to leave. That's not the opening story of tonight. Let's talk about how no one cares with what about we're going to talk about. Wait. Even Pabu. Right, they, 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 they doorbell my thing. I have to go. To okay. Them. We'll just wait. Let's go. We'll find out what's happening. No, what's that? What's an uplifting topic to talk about, is... Mark? Wait, is he, are we going to? Oh, darn it. We're good. We're good. <laughs> I thought you were going to have like a conversation with the headset on with this guy so we could yeah. we could eavesdrop on it. <laughs> no, this is my lunch delivery. Uh, well, let's okay, uh, let's talk about what there is to talk about, which is obviously there is MSI. I don't think it's going to necessarily be all of what we're going to talk about because I think a lot of people are ready to move on as we'll talk about it in a second, but we can do that. Obviously, we can talk in a second. I'm sure uh, Mark and I will have some questions to ask Pabu about his time in Iceland and MSI and blah, blah, blah. Uh, then there's just like a slew of smaller things. So like DeMonte officially going content creator for the split, no longer with 100 Thieves. Uh, Azel going freelance, which people were asking me about that before the start of the show and trying to understand. Because there's a lot of confusion about what that stuff means. I'm going to ask Mark to describe it because Mark actually, I feel like, knows better than I do. I don't know, maybe. And then uh, there's the co-streaming updates 
Did you see that, Mark? The co-streaming updates there now? It's like yeah, a watch party. Yeah, they booted thing. everyone off. Yes. They said, if, unless you're getting a ton of viewers, we don't care. No. Um, okay. Yeah. And then uh, it seems like there were some, a couple other things that happened this past week, which I am trying to recall, besides MSI and those things, obviously. I don't think there were any roster changes necessarily, but uh, as always, I don't know. There's, there's some complaints about certain things and some excitement around others. Am I thinking of anything? Chat, anything I'm forgetting about? Pace Tram is also on contract? Okay. He didn't get a Reddit thread, sadly. We already got the EG ADC stuff. Did he tweet it? Did I miss it? Uh, maybe. People, I mean, somebody in chat said it, so. I know they've been, he like, tweet it. moving everybody over for a while. Oh, there was the schedule drama, which I don't know if anybody wants to talk about. If we, if somebody wants to call in about it, I think we can talk about it. But I You think know what I, was, was more drama to me that didn't even get nearly as much attention, which I didn't realize, is there's a coin flip to decide side selection. Oh, that? Yeah. You know Did, that? Was there a drama about that? No. Yeah, but the, the, was oh, there? I, mean, I didn't see it. I, I, I didn't see it, but I definitely saw like a little bit about like the, the side selection for game one of the finals was just a coin flip. Like the bracket didn't matter. Like your, your seed didn't matter. You just got lucky. Yeah, that, that was crazy to me. Because like the, the whole like delay thing, I was like, okay, you can complain a little bit about it, but it sounds like it's a shitty situation and like people are just doing the best that they can. Like I'm not going to complain too much. But this is one where I'm like, wait, why wouldn't... Dom won't get the, the higher... They had the higher seed. They had more wins in group stage. I I don't... Like, I would understand doing a coin flip if it was, like, offset some other, like, fairness thing. But I don't, I don't see how this is, like, any any more fair than being like, yeah, hey, just give it to the guys who perform better. It just seems seems weird. That is weird. That because is it's not weird. like football where you get, like, a half and a half and then you kind of get fucked at overtime. <laughs> Because there's nothing, there's like there's nothing else you can do for for overtime really, unless you're gonna do like shootout to determine who gets it, you know, like or like kick field goals until someone wins. I don't know, like it's ridiculous. But here it's like no, there's five games. It's not an even number of games. I don't think a coin flip sounds very fair. Uh, Lion Nation says, are you taking any any takes about fixing NA today? I look, I think one Mark gets to pick, but ah. what I think we don't want is the same. Fucking take like if you're want to call it and say that we need to move to Chicago, or we need to, I don't know, do any number of different things, then I don't. We've we've had these conversations before. You're probably not going to get picked. If you have some really interesting take, you have to convince Mark with your take that you're fixing an A take is something worth talking about on the show where we've talked about this stuff a lot. The other thing is, uh, I I have a couple of videos coming out over the next week or so uh, that's going to talk about a lot of different stuff in North America. And I almost, I almost feel like next week we're going to end up hotline leads going to probably talk a lot about the things that I talk about in my videos. Cause I think I'm hopeful they spark some conversation in this space. So what are we going to say? Abu, how would, how would you fix NA? I'm not sure what like the biggest issue is because I feel like the ceiling for NA is really high. And I think that like, like Cloud9 showed that they can be really fucking good. So like, I think it's really hard to identify the specific. Did you see their so Pantanet like, game though? <laughs> they lost to I those mean, guys. They, they got. So you do you know what happened with that game, right? Go it, ahead. They they looked at all of our games. We never played Santa Tom Kench in our lives. So they lock in Kaiser Nautilus, the Tom Kench, and the game is instantly lost. Like, <laughs> it's so hard to win that game from that point. So I think it was kind of like. I don't know. Almost unlucky that we played something that we never played. So it's not the, not the worst loss. Like why do you have to do that? Bad, to them? And like, okay. you shouldn't you shouldn't disrespect like uh, bad teams, of course. But like, also it was a fairly reasonable like assumption. Well, thanks. I uh, you definitely picked up some of the the EU kind of like LEC melded speech when when you said really good or something like that, or you, you said something where I was like, oh, I've heard that. I've heard that from every EU pro ever. I don't know. Oh. I don't know what it is. Did you did you pick up some of the the EU accent? What, of course, by talking to them there. But also, I've kind of spoken like this for a while. I just absorb so much content from specifically EU pros because I feel like they're kind of easy to study at the moment. Um, so I just kind of like absorb their content and it just slides into my vocabulary because I pick up terminology and then because I'm picking up terminology, it comes with like. The way it's said, and then it just kind of snowballs from there until I speak like a European. 
Yeah. <laughs> Waiting for the accent uh, to switch over from Aussie to German, I guess. I don't know. All right. Well, we'll get into those topics that we talked about in just a second. But first off, uh, we I know we talked about your quarantine, but how was MSI for you, Pabu? Oh, how was MSI um, for you, Pabu? It was um pretty crazy experience, honestly. Um, it's like, oh, I think for most of all, I'm like grateful to have made it to the second stage because it means I got a lot more time in Iceland and I got to do some like really cool things. Like I went up to the volcano and I like snorkeled between like the tectonic plates, like the European and North American tectonic plate. Um, you it's snorkeled? called Silpra. Yeah, it, it's so it's it's like this glacier water that has been filtered through like magma or magma stone for like 50 years so it's like the purest water around and so your visibility is you can just see for like 50 meters and then it's also in between two tectonic plates so there's like fishes and stuff and you swim down these fishes um and you can see for like 50 meters and it's like just like deep blue like gorgeous i don't know it's really really crazy how um, cold is it, it water it, extremely it would have been like two degree water um and so i spent like maybe 15 20 minutes in and i came out the uh, shivering like a madman it was a bit it was a bit much for sure sounds yeah. like a shard pool huh travis <laughs> anyway have you uh he's just making a, a nerdy reference you can ignore him Papu. i'm sorry uh did you enjoy the event uh because i know you just mentioned a lot of iceland stuff but how how was competing at the event um i mean i haven't played on a stage in a long time and like the the stage in Os is a bit dinky, so like having like a really insanely cool stage and getting to play on like I don't know like on stream against some insane players was like a really cool experience. And then I don't know, almost everything about it was like not perfect, but really good. Like getting all the experience was nice. We got to win some games. Like the features and all the content was insane. Like, we all got to pop off on Twitter. Just kind of, like, almost every alley went really well for us. Um, like, it was, yeah, I think it was, like, positive in basically every way. And I got to meet so many cool people as well. So, like, the event was pretty pretty nuts in, yeah, almost every way. Who, who's running that Twitter account flaming the shit out of us, by the way? Is that, is that Diana? Or is, who, who is, no, who no, is doing um, this to me? Uh, you might know him. It was Wing Guardian or Winston. He worked for uh, Gen G for a while. Um, I don't know if he's done any work in NA, but he definitely. I don't know. There's definitely uh, a lot of Cloud9 memes coming out for sure. Um, I, it, it's kind of a. It, it's a bit of a bit of a cheap shot, but it, it's definitely like easy impressions for sure. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. how ever it is for everybody. Just make fun of NA easy impressions. Mark and I do it too. Quite frankly, it's uh. Haha, uh, NA sucks. Likes to the right and upvotes to the left. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty free, but it's yeah. also probably a bit uh, a bit much. Were you, I assume you were able to watch, since you you said you've been there for three or four days, you were able to watch the games this weekend. Yeah, I've seen them all. What did What did you think of semis and finals? Were you Were they great games? Were they not great games? I've seen a lot of people saying. That they they feel like MSI this year was like one of the best MSIs, so I, I'm kind of curious. Yeah, I think it was really entertaining. Um, I think the Mad Lion series is one of my favorite series ever. Um, some of the moments in it took me back to like the, you know, the the Rock series where Prey mm -hmm. sniped the, the SKT TP. Yeah, like that. Like some of those moments were like up up there with that for me. So it was really fun, and I think the finals is also really insane. Um, the fifth game kind of sucked. I feel like that happens a lot. The fifth game just sucks. Like, one team is just, like, cooked. Yeah. Um, and, like, they, they just lose in 10 minutes. So I guess that kind of sucked. But the series overall quality seems really fun. Um, and I was, like, pretty surprised. I thought that they would maybe be a bit more one-sided. But I think the teams matched up really well. People in the chat saying, nah, MSI this year was weak. And another one said, MSI this year was shit. Call in. Put your take in there. Let Mark pull you. If you really want to say it, uh, and Pabu will argue with you and, and convince you that you're wrong. Uh, anyway, I think maybe it's a, a moment to talk about kind of a weird thing that happened, which I thought was only happening to me, but then I saw LS tweeting about it. And then I looked at the LCS YouTube account and saw that like the dive and this or that and stuff were also having a tough time. 
Uh, and I just, it's weird. Yeah. MSI shoulder content this year just did not do great. And I don't, I don't know why. Uh, I don't, even this show, we're having uh, lower viewers than we normally do. So I don't, I don't know if anybody has like a take on that. I, my suggest, my thought process is the format is just really long and people might burn out on MSI or there's just not enough time to even like watch any of the shoulder content. There's cause there's really only a couple days out of the what like three weeks that this thing is running for people to not have games that are going i don't know mark do you have any theories i mean it's not like it's a long tournament three weeks is not that that long um but the first week is like what thursday to tuesday and then it starts friday friday yeah, i think it's six tuesday days again. six days then two day break then five days then two day break then three days so uh yeah you have like what four and days no, off no, over the course of like three weeks it's, it's wild yeah and i mean it also has like a weird like i don't know if this is something i've ever thought about in terms of tournament creation and, and stuff but it has like a weird decent like acceleration and like pacing? the first day what's that do you mean pace like would pacing be a good yeah word? yeah it, it's pacing but like it just like ramps into like it's over you know it's like six days of best of ones you knock out what do they take out? They have 12 teams and they go to six yeah. roughly. And then you do the same thing, but you go from six to four. And then it's just like those three best of fives and it's over. And it's so many, it's so front loaded with content, but like, it's, it's not like the top teams all playing each other right out the gate. So I don't know. It feels like, I don't know how to put it. I, I wonder mean, if I that has anything to do with it though. We have, there's so le so many less teams, especially from the, so many, so many fewer teams, my God. So many fewer teams <laughs> in MSI than there are at Worlds. Worlds is five weeks and MSI is like three weeks. So it's just, it's, you're really stretching the, the amount of content and entertainment you can out of all that. Uh, and it, I think that's also part of it too, is like, and then MSI just doesn't feel like Worlds, right? So I, I don't know, I kind of want, I almost wish MSI was shorter. Uh, that's kind of my take on it is like, there's just too much, you know, coming out of groups. I think we were like, Oh, this is pretty cool. But then you do five days of rumble and you're like, God, this is a lot. So I don't know. I'm, I'm I'd love to hear calls and takes from people. You know, again, I don't think this whole episode needs to be MSI. Maybe you want to talk to Pabu about uh, some oceanic stuff. I know we've got New Zealand and Aussie callers uh, frequently on the show. So maybe some people want to ask him about that or talk about his team or anything like that. Obviously we can talk about, I don't know, some NA stuff or, some of the the other news but i think if we are going to talk about msi you know maybe a couple calls about the games but if somebody has opinions on the format that would be cool too i think it is crazy long because like i feel like there probably is like a little bit of burnout because i don't know as much as i love playing six games because rng you have to watch six games of me playing because rng like <laughs> it's like that, yeah that, that's a lot of games for for pentanel gg to have versus rng so like I, I don't know. I think it is probably too long, but it's also, it's like, it's extremely good for us, right? And it's extremely good for a lot of the, like, minor regions to have this kind of tournament for us. It's like, it favors us in a way that, like, it, it gives us, like, you know, like, all this practice and all these opportunities to actually play. But in terms of pure viewership, as much as, like, I wish that it wasn't this way, it's just not what people want to see for the most part. Um, so... I think that there's probably a good case that a lot of MSI time was just like dead time where people are just waiting for something more interesting. Yeah. And that probably wore them out. Yeah. I mean, time zone matters too for the, for West coast people. It was pretty brutal. Um, when was the last time we had a good schedule for West coast? This is not even me as a gripe. It's actually, I was, I was thinking about it in terms of this video that I told you I want to do Mark about sort of NA at international events and optimizing for it. And I, I was actually thinking there's just I, maybe Europe, when we were in Europe, that that was the last time we were in Europe, that that was a good schedule for North America. But my God, it's been so long, I feel like, since North America has had like a good schedule. Yeah, I can't remember the last time that I wasn't up in the middle of the night or like wake. Like, I can't remember the last time I didn't need to change my sleep schedule to to watch the event. Yeah. And this year we're going to Worlds again. So that's just one thing I've been thinking about is I'm like... You mean China again? Oh, yeah. Sorry. 
we're going to worlds again everybody uh yeah <laughs> hey <laughs> yeah. somehow we're <laughs> yeah we're going to china again and so the schedule is going to be really bad again for for north american viewers and i don't i just keep i've been thinking a lot recently about how we seem to make all these decisions based around international competition and then uh we don't have the ability to really watch it reasonably in the in north america i don't know whatever uh bubba so oh wait mark one last thing on this so again people have been asking a lot about this freelance versus contract thing i don't know if you want to explain it because you're on a freelance you are a freelancer so what's the difference between you i was the og i never joined up at riot and back in the day that was the go-to move was you became a rider and you got your account unlocked and you got to become a, a red badge kind of um they didn't want you so i don't, I don't they, no, I actually, I was like, no, I'm going to keep doing me, dude. I'm not, I like doing other content. And so, I mean, I don't know how much of this is a hundred percent to talk about, but like when you were a full-time employee, you're an actual employee. And so that comes with all the things that being an employee comes with like health benefits and all that kind of stuff. You know, you pay for your own health care. Um, but it also comes with more restrictions. Like you are a riot employee and like a lot of employers, you can't go do that job for someone else when you're being employed by them. Um, and so anytime that any of the riot casters ever did anything outside, it was more like a loan situation, as I understand it, where like that, those people are paying riot to use the casters or something as, as opposed to like me negotiating my own day rate. Um, so, uh, I had never done that because I always wanted to do stuff with other people. I did the blame game. I did stuff with offline TV. Like even that stuff, I think you, you would say I you probably couldn't do. You did uh, stuff with Yahoo. That was when we just first started up. using you, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, contracting is, is basically freelance, but uh, that's like I'm, a, I'm an independent contractor. Um, but there's, so, there's kind of two different modes because contracting is freelancing, but it's not the same for you as it is for for Azale. And those there's guys. there's levels of, of the contractor that you can be, um, and so I'm not exactly sure what level everyone ends up. Uh, but er, anyways, after like... I did this for a while. Eventually, I think some people, I think riots just started moving people because, I mean, like we would do office days and stuff. And so people were kind of working five days a week as a, as a full-time employee for riot. Um, but honestly, some of those days were stretches to fill, <laughs> uh, you know, we're like, I'm studying for the game and they're really just playing league at, at the office, you know? <laughs> um, so I think it makes some sense why it's happening, but I don't think it's great for everyone because if you're only working, two days a week, it's it's a lot shittier for people who used to be, you know, full time. So, um, I don't know, I, I think everyone's situation is a little different. I've always been happy being freelancer um, and being able to kind of do whatever I want because, you know, I don't need to check in with anyone. I can't do whatever I want. I couldn't go like, <laughs> I don't know, do something really crazy and then be like, yeah, it doesn't reflect on my Riot image at all. Obviously it does, but like, uh, for the most part, you have the, the ability yeah, to take on... you are not Riot Mark Z on the show. You're not here as a Riot employee. Exactly. I don't need to worry about necessarily as much of what comes out of my mouth because uh, yeah. I'm not a representative of Riot. The uh, the only other thing that's kind of weird about the contract stuff is I do feel like it's kind of this weird in-between. So I know this because I have tried to hire uh, the contractors, the people that are not like Mark but are, are the other folks. I'm not going to say any names uh who are like full-time contractors riot still gets the ability to like i if i want to interview one of those people like if i wanted to go interview zale i have to get riot's approval in order to interview him which i think is kind of weird because he is a contractor and if i wanted to hire him that has to also get approved through riot so if i wanted to pay him ten thousand dollars to do a video you know which is my standard rate for people uh he <laughs> mark lives a good life the uh it would it would right would have to approve that uh which i think is kind of weird and i'm not i'm uncertain about the legalities of it but i i don't know i don't know enough to uh sue anyone anyway <laughs> should we shall we get into callers yeah let's do it um if you haven't seen the show before it's a live call-in show so if you want to talk to papu what you gotta do is go up and join this discord which i'm spamming in the twitch chat right now um once you get in the Discord, go ahead and join one of the pleb calls or pleb calls to voice channel. Mute your microphone as a courtesy once you get in there. 
um, and then the Pleb Topics text channel, you'll go ahead and write whatever it is that you want to talk about. If you have a question about the OPL, the MSI, whatever it is, um, you know, we'll keep an eye out. If we like the topic, we will pull you from the Pleb calls into the waiting room where you'll hang out until it's your turn to come on air. And it's then, not the uh, OPL. After a quick audio check, you'll be there. It's the LCO. L LCO, excuse me. We constantly change the abbreviations for all of our leagues in the space. Obviously, I know. Yeah. Obviously, there were some pretty big changes. In that. PCS, you know, yeah. there's the VCS, it's and then so all of them end up, up having the same name, and you're like, oh yeah. god. LCS, LEC. I remember back in the day when I was just EU LCS. I liked the, those days because we were the better broadcast. And now, uh, I don't know if that's true anymore. All right, Bob. Bob, we're just hanging out here, having a yeah. Well, I guess I shouldn't complain about not being the better broadcast whenever. OPL got what, it, what happened to it. How are you hanging it? How's this year been for you, Pablo? I mean, you still went to MSI, right? So, yeah. Um, I was expecting it to be like pretty, pretty rough. Um, but it's honestly been pretty good. Um, the ESL has done a really good job, like running the league. And you know, I was fully expecting to be like, hello, ready to be done with league. You know? Yeah. What did I just come back? Like I. Be quit. I was just asking Pabu about how this year has been for him. You were ready to be done with and, league, and yeah, then you well, have like, to be. but yeah, and then like I, I got a decent enough offer that I can like you know maintain a decent livelihood and still continue to compete. So, like, it, it's pretty hyped that you know that like DLC did pop up, and ESL's done like a pretty good job of running it, and you know they've made some good content, and it looks good, and it's fun. So like. I thought even if it was there, it like it might suck, but it doesn't suck that much. It's like it's pretty, it's pretty hype. Like um, it's like if it was to be, like anything, it it's so it's kind of like a genuine successor of the the OPL. Like yeah. it's genuinely quite fun and, and like quite nice. So I don't know. It, it turned out pretty nicely. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That makes me feel good. Lord Audi is here. Lord Audi, where are you come from? Uh, Queens, New York. What do you want to talk about on the show? Well, the topic is up for Pablo and the group. Uh, so Pablo, when I think one of the last interviews that you did, you spoke about the, uh, you know, being able to enjoy the game and, you know, keeping it cool while playing in like in a competitive setting. So uh, how much of a benefit do you feel that is uh, as part of the coaching for teams when it comes to these kind of uh, situations? Because I feel that, and that's the last time I'm going my take, is that <clears throat> part of the the factor that made North America perform the way they did is basically, I think it was just basically the stress that came with the setting and not much about the talent of the players. Sorry, can you, what's that last bit one more time? If you could just uh, sum it up, Lord Ani. Uh, that I feel that the performance that North America did at the end uh, during the during during MSI was mostly driven by their stress of uh, during the event than the actual talent of the team. So like Cloud Nine should have yes. performed better, but they didn't because uh, uh, just they were stressed out or like there there were outside okay. factors. Yeah, a, a pressure, I guess. Uh, I guess during gotcha. the game. Okay. Pablo, I don't know how you feel taking us on, but uh, I mean, I I don't have like two like bizarre opinions, but like I do think that coming from North America does kind of add this extra level of pressure, and like the kind of the the expectations behind NA are like pretty brutal, and the fans are pretty brutal. But I don't know how many people that actually affects. But I do think when you look at the other teams, you like, say like G two and Mad Lions, that the way that they enjoy the game does definitely add to their ability to succeed in stressful situations. So yeah, it's hard to say that like Cloud9 just got domed by the fact that they're stressed out, but it can definitely be positive to be on the other end. I mean, yeah, I, I assume, uh, I mean, how were you guys dealing with this? Did you feel a lot of stress or pressure? Or, or was it like, after you made it to Rumble, were you just like, we're gonna do everything we can to take some games, but perhaps very different situation than a Cloud9, for instance? Yeah, I mean, we, we were kind of past what expectations were, right? So everything else is just a little bit extra. And so it was just, you know, it was a good learning opportunity for us to just, like, sit there and play the games. But I do think we would have been extremely disappointed if we didn't win a game. And, like, if we didn't win that Cloud9 game, I think we would have all been, like, pretty sad and pretty upset. So 
it's like there there is of course like not many expectations but even then like you're a competitor you're always going to be pushing for like that next step so it, there's still like a little bit of innate pressure and it definitely got a bit rough after we dropped some games that we definitely could have won yeah i uh i mean i think na mentality is definitely one of the the big struggles that we have at international events i mean there, there's plenty so i don't want to you know make it seem like oh it's one or the other kind of thing but I always think back, if no one ever read it, there was a Players' Tribune article that Doublelift did after, I think it was 2016 TSM. Might have been one of the Team Liquid ones. I can't remember. I like referencing it because at the time, there was also a thing that happened uh, with the International, and they did did one with Kuroki, the Team Liquid's captain, for that. And you can see the importance of leadership and mentality in how people approach the games. And I, I think, you know, a lot of North American teams are in a really weird spot where their fans want them to perform. If they don't perform, they're going to get trashed on. But at the same time, they're getting trashed on before they even go there because they're from North America. And so it's like kind of the worst of both worlds where like Korean teams obviously have a lot of pressure on them. Like I don't want to pretend like it's North America only has pressure. Korean teams, LPL teams, like when LGD was struggling last year in uh, the, the playing stage, they were getting trashed from their own region. Like everyone has that pressure. Um, but... North America has that pressure too, but then they also have, I think, the way that a lot of wildcard teams have where people are not expecting much from them in terms of actual performance. People are kind of already counting them out of a lot of situations. <laughs> and I think it, NA players get that in their head where it's like, okay, everyone thinks we're shit. We got to go prove that we're not shit, but we also are expected to like not be shit and, and still win because then we lose. And like I, I feel like it's just like a really weird position to be in. And, and I don't think that you know, a lot of the, there, there always seems to be this moment when you watch NA play where like once they lose the important game, then they suddenly seem to start playing better. Like once they're or, eliminated, or like, yeah. Yeah. Or like even once they just take a couple losses, they suddenly start playing. Like Team Liquid last year in Group A, I think they started 0 3. Maybe they, they won the last one of their round robin after they started 0 2 and they started changing their play style. Uh, but it always feels like there's a, a pretty similar song and dance to that kind of stuff with, with a lot of these teams. Um, and, you know, it happened at MSI twice uh, with the Ole one and then the core JJ one where I think that they had to get a tiebreaker to get out. Like, it, it feels... Oh, Team Liquid started 2-1. Am I thinking of the wrong thing? Possibly. Possibly. Either way, uh, I, I, I feel like a lot of times you can see this. Um, uh, I mean, I'm really curious what happened with Blabber. And I don't think we'll ever really know. But it's like... you. That's the type of thing where I don't think they would ever stick that into a, you know, I've probably had limited number of people there, so maybe they weren't filming some behind the scenes documentary or whatever, but that's, that's where I'd love to just know when, if, was it that that first game went bad for Blabber and then after that he just started to really freak out where it started to steamroll and it was like things were not good for him, like it started to steamroll, started to snowball where then the next game and then the next game and all these things just started to kind of make him lose the confidence that he had in in LCS. We did start one and two. God damn Twitch chat. They lost to Machi and then they lost to uh, Sooning and then they beat G2. But you motherfuckers trying to tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Okay, Mark. Sorry. Yeah, I just had to, I don't know, defend my honor. I don't know. How do you guys deal with it, Pabu? Like, how how did the your your team deal with it? Because it's, like you guys did beat that C nine team or in that C nine game, and by that point in time, you had lost quite a few matches. Uh, Ed Rumble. Yeah, so I, I don't. How do you how do you like six. how do you make sure that things don't just start to you start to lose control of it? Um, I think that well. I have a bit of a theory towards like why the teams start poorly and then do well. And I think it's because when you go to these events, you kind of really want to play the game properly and you scrim these good teams and you have success, but then when it comes to stage, it just doesn't click for whatever reason. Like whatever was working for you in scrims, there's some sort of reason that makes it not work on stage. And usually it's just player gap. Usually when you get on stage, like the players are just better and it, what you're doing doesn't work. So. The teams kind of like stick to what they think would work and then they kind of like devolve back into what they're actually good at 
and then they could win the games because they're playing from a position of strength and a position of comfort. So, I think that, like, for us, we could always kind of, like, throw hands. We weren't, like, that bad with our fingers. Like, our server has low ping, so it's like, if we get to butt heads, it's not the worst. And so, it just kind of took, like, six games to the point where we had a draft that we could get out of the early game in and be able to butt heads with the team. So, as soon as, like, that came to us, and I looked at the draft and I'm like, wait, they can't do anything early game, and we outscaled them, and our team fighting is better. And it's like, as soon as I saw that, I, I was pretty confident that the game was super winnable. So, it's kind of like, a lot of teams stray away from their comfort because they want to be, like, a top one team in the world, but then... A team like Team Liquid will have obvious strengths that they have to play to and will just kind of move back, back into those and then have better success doing that. Were you, probably were you the, the OS Pro that told me that line that I can't always remember, which is like when the ping is low, the something will yes, flow? Yes, 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 what, what is it again? I said, I said, when the ping is low, the micro flows. Well, the micro uh, flows, that's I right. I think I yoinked that from someone. I can't remember, but it was some coach talking about the, uh, yeah, some, some coach was talking about those and said that uh, when the ping is low, the micro flows. So they weren't looking for, like, you know, any master tacticians, but they just wanted to grab someone who had hands. Um, That's I can't right. remember okay. who it was. Maybe it was, it might have been someone talking about FBI. Um, I can't remember, but. Uh, I know uh, Anero has said before that he just wants people with hands. I remember I remember him saying that before. Maybe, maybe it was him. Yeah. Uh, well. If you allow me to follow up on that, Pavo. So, so Travis mentioned the C9, C9 game, but now let, so if you don't mind talking about the fit game versus Unicorns of Love. So you are now basically before a game in which it's going to decide if you're going to get to the next stage or not. So that, that's the kind of, you know, like all nothing situation. So how do you approach a game like that, trying to keep that same mentality of just keeping it cool, keeping it fun and just do our best or something like that? Um, I've been in a few game fives recently. It, like, I haven't had too many in my career, but recently I've had a few with this team. And kind of what always comes through is like comfort and things that you are uh, like practiced on. But p like personally, like what happens inside of the team doesn't really matter. It's always like kind of the players that are clutch always seem to succeed in those game five environments. And I knew that their jungler could play like two champions. And so as soon as you got him off Nidalee, he really didn't know what to do, and so I just dropped the jungle pool and got him, like, I don't know, I, bl I blind picked Karthus because I knew he would pick Kha'Zix into it, and I knew that Kha'Zix was one of the worst champions on the patch. So, like, I, I thought that he played Kha'Zix in his finals, and as soon as I realized this, I was coming in with, like, I don't know, like, I, I had a position strength because I had a plan that I knew would work and that I was comfortable and that I thought that they would play into, and so from that point on, it's really hard to be, like, scared because... You just kind of have to be confident in your preparation, right? And so we knew that we had almost like a trump card, I guess. It's not really a trump card, but that's how it feels. Like when you when you have a draft plan and you know that this is going to go in a certain way and then it does, it feels good. Like you're you're in like the zone to win the game, right? Because you, you've prepared for this, you've expected this. And so that kind of put us in a position where we can play the game out super easily. Um, if it was like a strange draft or like we didn't have such a obvious like condition to get an advantage, it may be a bit harder, but I think that a lot of players tend to get absorbed in the moment and I think that's good for them because it it's always like about the game, right? And especially in a lot of these game fives, you see teams will just like get flustered and make terrible plays and go down like 0-10. And the other team is just capitalizing on the opportunities that are presented to them in the moment like not very rarely do i see like a game five apart from like you know the classic like morgana leblanc um like fake account of play thing like very often it's just who is ready to play the game it, it's kind of vague but i feel like kind of like the clutch players come through in best of five situations and those kind of things are what show through when it's been like you know, a, a long day. Do do all OS pros call it Kazix? Uh, yes. I I, I I I'm 
I'll, uh, yeah, I don't know what the what the correct pronunciation. Well, is. no, no, was, I'm not. First off, not saying there's any correct. You know, we all have our regional dialects, but it's just funny because we I hear Kazix and I'm thinking like Zix Ziggs, but uh, Ka- Kazix <laughs> is I think how most people say it, Kaz- Kazix. And so it was just funny when you were saying Kazix. Yeah, uh, several that's times, yeah. Like, I, uh, uh, yeah, it's definitely, we, we it's definitely Yeah, twi- Twitch chat suggesting uh, that perhaps you pronounce it in a different way. Uh, where where in Australia are you from, Pabu? Um, I've lived in Melbourne for the large majority of my life. So maybe uh, it's I've a Melbourne in Sydney, uh, dialect of pronouncing Kazakh. I've, I've been to Melbourne. Be. I don't think that's... Uh, I don't think all of them would take <laughs> Kazakhs. All right, anyway... Uh, Lord Audi, thanks so much for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we move on to a quick break? Uh, I want to shout out my wife, as always. And uh, shout out to Gamer Fuel and Edinburgh. Thank you all. Very good. Thank you so much for the call. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Speaking of Alienware, thank you so much to Alienware for sponsoring Hotline League. They are having on June 1st, which is next a week from tomorrow, as we're recording live, Tuesday. Of next week they're having their big event you got to go check it out they uh they have more information on their twitter if you want to go see but june 1st 2 p.m central yeah i wish i've always tried to convince them to go with pacific but they they, they like the central because they're in austin uh 2 p.m central they're gonna be streaming on their twitch channel which is twitch.tv slash alienware and you'll get a bunch of new info from the alienware update so go check it out they now have a, a red logo as well. So they're, they're changing all sorts of stuff. Anyway, thank you so much, Alienware, for sponsoring us. But be sure to check out the Alienware update on June 1st, 2 p.m. Central, on their Twitch channel to learn more about what's coming next from Alienware. All right. Mark, you want to grab the next caller? Sure. Thank you to some of these wonderful subs. Coco doing stuff. Smoke Dog. Kethuis, the Tulip Queen, Ari Waddle, Chief Xantopus, Azure, and John G365 for 18 months. We're, uh, I think, 37 subs away from 2K, which I don't know if we'll hit it tonight, but maybe. Tre- Treethon, is that how you say it? Uh, Treethon, yeah. Treethon, that's right. You've been, wait, you've been on the show before, right? Yeah, I've been on a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Treethon, remind me where you're calling from. Uh, I'm in New Jersey right now, but I usually call from Queens. Okay. You're all over the place. Can't keep... Tri- all is that the tri-state area? Is that what they call it? Yes. The yes. tri-state area. <laughs> See? I know. I'm, I'm very learned on uh, North American geography. Anyway, what do you want to talk about on the show? So I want to talk about... Uh, I think it's a not really the best idea for DeMonte to focus on content creation and streaming instead of going back to Academy. I know we said... You know, there's stigma for LCS players going back to Academy, which he's done before, but I think it's better if he goes back to Academy instead of the streamer route. Why? I feel like... I know he says he's not retiring, but I feel like if you go more towards the streamer side of things, it, it's like a soft retirement, more so than than Academy would be. Um, it just... It seems like if he... If he's going to go streaming, he's probably never going to go back to pro play from that because of just like, you know, how streaming works in terms of, you know, just a lot just of, because a lot it'll of be hard for him to stay competitive or I think it's more that at one point, I think it's just, oh, this makes me a lot of money, too. This is enjoyable, way less stress environment than pro play. So if he gets a taste of the content creation game, he may never get out of it. I'm going to be honest, unless DeMonte can start getting a fuck ton of viewers, I don't know if he's going to make more money doing this than competing. I mean, LCS pro players are very well compensated, so uh, I, I I don't know if the viewers, or sorry, if the uh, the finances will be there. I will agree, though, that like it is difficult, I think, for pro players to take a little bit of time off and then want to come back, uh, but we've seen it before. Uh, I, I just think... I, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, I don't think it's really time off. I think it's just like how you sometimes like all tech went to Korea and grinded solo queue there for a little bit and then came back, you know, like I think it's more of a, I'm going to focus on solo queue and stuff rather than go and spend all my time in scrims and VOD reviews and in a structured team setting for a team that you ultimately don't really care about. Um, 
because he's done it before to his point. He's gone through academy, shown that he's going to be the best mid in academy if he goes there. Um, and I, I kind of understand where he's coming from about not wanting to go through that song and dance again. Uh, yeah, I just gonna- worry that when you're positioning yourself as a content creator, like Alltech went to Korea and grinded, right? That's a lot different than, hey, guys, are going to be streaming 9 to 5 every day or something, you know? Yeah, I think it's just hedging your bet, you know? Like, Alltech doesn't have a stream right now, <laughs> you know? Like, I think it's you want to have a, a product in case it doesn't work and, and you don't get team offers in 2020, but – or 2022, excuse me, but it's also not like he doesn't want to play. I, I think it. I think it's pretty understandable what he's doing. Um, yeah. Is it extremely worrying to consider the fact that he doesn't want to go back to academy. Like, does that speak to like academy itself? Like the fact that his best way to get back to, or the way that he thinks, if he wants to keep competing that he can just not go to academy like is that is that a is that a judgment on academy it sounds like you're saying so you're breaking like, up a little is, Papu. That... oh the, yeah the cables from across the ocean are struggling i'm sure it'll it'll kind of yeah, yeah sorry, sorry. Um, no it's good i mean if, if it gets bad maybe we'll have you just drop your webcam but um you're it sounds like you're just saying like hey that might be a bad side for academy whenever pro player feels like it's not necessarily important to compete in it to stay relevant well um, let's move with that then uh damn yeah. Demonte's in the game but also apparently listening because he came in and typed i either play academy or stream not many other options uh, how's he how's he in a, how do you know he's in a game because he's streaming right now so he, he came in said something and then he went is he listening to us hold on let me see I, I'm listening to his stream. Okay, okay. Nope. Gonna... He's level one. They're, they're trading out. He just killed a, a Kaisa. They're about to get a double <laughs> kill on the Nami. All right, he's fed as fuck. This game's over. Caitlin okay, so then how, is he, how does he hear what we're saying then? I don't know. Is it somebody else who is running his tw- his Twitch account? He said, I either play Academy or stream. So unless you think this person is like role-playing Demonte as well, I'm pretty sure it was just like while he was loading into the game. Hmm. It's a very suspicious situation. Uh, all right. Well, let's go to what Pablo was talking about. Is is it a bad side for Academy? Um, I don't know. It's it's an interesting sign for Academy for sure. But if if Academy is about development, and Demonte is like, look, I've been developed, and you know what I can do, and I you'll be able to see. Like, I don't need to prove myself. Then maybe you don't feel like maybe Academy is not important. I don't know, Mark. This is a very good question, though. I like it, Pabu. He can, like, develop... Like, being being a player isn't all about being a player, right? You're also, like, a brand. You're, like, everything about being, like, a complete, like, marketing thing is super important as well. So showing that he can make content and run a good stream and be have all of these metrics for sponsors is also, like, extremely valuable to marketing himself as a player in the future. So I don't think it's, like necessarily a soft retirement i really disagree with that insinuation um and i also think that like almost it's kind of expected for every player that wants to be competitive to sacrifice everything else in their life and it's like if academy is not doing anything for him why should he grind that shit when he can do something else that is going to also further his career and then also give him better quality of life in the meantime it's like there's kind of an expectation that you just do the thing that allows you to work the most hours when that's not for your career, let alone the best thing for you. I I definitely agree too uh, with what you're saying, Pabu, because it's not like he hasn't played in a, a team setting before, which is I think one of the big things a lot of younger players probably get from an academy situation or um, an amateur situation where like you, you're going through a lot of those those growing pains. And like, yes, whenever he inevitably goes back into scrimming, there'll probably be a little bit of rust to chip off, but I don't think he needs to be, like you're saying, grinding scrims to like work with this group of teammates. Cause a lot of the, a lot of like scrims in practice is less about individual, like you do obviously work on yourself during all of that too, but it's like, 
you know, after a VOD review, you're not breaking down your own mechanics. You know, you're, normally you're in there like, hey, why did we go for this scuttle contest? We should have done this, this, and this in the game. And like, I can't do this. And like, that stuff will help you, your team, but it's it's not necessarily the best thing for an individual player to improve even. So on that front, you know, like, you, I think going to Soul Hue and getting, I don't know, X amount of extra games is is at least relatively comparable while, like you're saying, you're also working on these other skills that are pretty important in, in the gaming ecosystem, all things considered. Um, and as Switch Chat pointed out, Solo did that this split where he wasn't on a team. He subbed in for a little bit, but then wasn't wasn't actually on, on CLG really, and then is now starting for uh, Golden, Golden Guardians. Guardians so. Yeah. He was technically signed to Golden Guardians Academy for what, like two seconds though? Yeah, but it felt like not... two seconds. Yeah. I'm I'm not exactly sure. He he bounced around a little bit, uh, but to the point it wasn't like he was grinding uh team situations. Uh I have a question for Pabu and Mark. Should DeMonte try to roll swap? Yeah. I one hundred percent think he should. Ooh. Because support is dog shit. You take any player with hands and a brain, you put them in support, and they will outperform most, most North American supports. I think that it's like very doable. And I think a player like Damonte, if... Because the thing... Uh, a lot of what people say about Damonte is that having Damonte in the team is like quite poggers, right? Like they want him as a personality, as an authority, as a voice inside of the game, as direction. And he can do that from support, and then also be mechanically relevant because like supports are bad so i think that that could be good but also i i think that there's still like potential as a mid laner for sure but support is for sure like free <laughs> this is so funny so i, I still have his, his thing open someone in his twitch chat said pabu thinks you should swap to support and then i saw him talking so i unmuted to watch what he said and he said he got offers to roll swap to support and i don't think he wanted to do it uh Oh, this is so funny that I'm watching. <laughs> our two streams are like interacting, but we're not actually uh, doing anything. I wonder. I wonder if he got offers to roll swap, like starting in LCS, or if it was like academy or something like that. I, I doubt it was a starting support position for him to roll swap. So, in to that point, like I'm sure it was. Hey, go go into academy or something to roll swap. Yeah, I, uh, I like part of the reason I asked was just because. NA mids, Omega lol, et cetera, et cetera. Like, it's just so hard. I know, obviously, we have more North American mid laners starting this this year, but, I mean, what we saw, I, I had written off who he, and then he roll swapped, and he had a lot of success. And so I was thinking about support when I asked that question, and it's funny that Pabu's mind went went exactly there. What do you think, Mark? I think it's, it makes sense, uh, especially given his play style was always less lane centric and more about impacting the map and and helping the team so like i definitely uh think if he was gonna lane swap that's the one that obviously makes sense uh, like that and, and probably jungle um as as two of the more macro or like map wide uh positions um but if if he wants to be a mid laner i, I don't think you know you should swap something that you don't want to do i feel like that will burn you out faster um so I I, th I can see if, if he's like, hey, I don't want to go play Academy at support for six months or something, you know. Um, or maybe he takes that offer down the road if it shows up. I don't know. but I mean, yeah, I think it's just something that he could dabble in while he's solo queuing, right? Is just sort of seeing how I feel. Although I guess that, that support and is... solo queue is probably a very different experience than, like, more yeah. so than a lot of roles than uh, support. In a, in a team I actually role. had this. Uh, I had someone recommend that I try like some. I had a coach tell me like I should try support, and I tried playing support up from like platinum, and I just got hard stuck D five, and I I got my challenger account, and I could play in challenger games fine, but I could not get past diamond five like on my own. It was There's like so many people that are listening support. to this right now that feel very vindicated in their support position. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's for sh for sure not a fun role to climb on. Interesting. Who was the who was the coach? Um, Peter Dunn. Oh, really? He, he didn't say like he, he yeah he didn't say um like I want you or anything, but he said that, like this can be a good thing for you to do. Interesting. Good old good old Petey Dunn. All right, Trethan, I know we've taken your topic and kind of moved in different directions, but 
I, I don't know if you have any quick thoughts on what we've said. Um, just, I guess one quick thought, and honestly, like hearing you guys talk about this was pretty fascinating anyway. Um, I feel like, would it be out of the realm possibility for DeMonte to have like a situation where he just kind of gets inserted into a team midway through the split anyway? Uh, kind of like Golden Glue and Evil Geniuses last year a little bit with how Chizuke kind of like that whole situation went around. Is that even a possibility? I think the chances are much less this year because I think you have a lot of teams that are acknowledging that they're not going to go to Worlds probably. And so I think with EG, they were making last minute decisions because they felt like they wanted to try to like sneak into to Worlds. I don't think that there's going to be a lot of teams that try to do the same thing this year. You've just seen a pretty big mentality shift in a lot of the, these teams. And then it's hard when you think about, like in my opinion, I think there were probably only four teams that are really competing for Worlds positions uh, at, this year. And I, I think none of those four teams are likely to try to last minute bring DeMonte in. So I don't know. I, Mark, I don't know if you have a different opinion. No, I mean, I, I agree that it's a possibility, and that is one of the advantages for not being on an academy team is for one of these, like, last-minute swap-outs, make-the-run kind of thing. But uh, to Travis's point, you have half the league arguably in a more development situation right now. Um, like, EG is realistically the one team that probably is making that push, and they would need to, like, 100 Thieves need to keep struggling, even with bringing Abadaga in, and then... You know, then maybe EG starts overtaking them, but they don't feel like Jazuke is playing well. But it doesn't sound like from how Peter Dunn talks about Jazuke and the team that uh, he's like, hmm, mid's up for debate. You know, like, it doesn't seem like that. So uh, Dig probably wouldn't drop Saligo or anything, and none of the other uh, teams outside of playoffs from Spring Split would, would probably be in that position either. Yeah. Maybe CLG would, but I don't, I don't know why they would. Like I'm just trying to think of anyone else that has like a more veteran lineup that's trying to make a run. Uh, that that would be the only other one, but I I think they Pobeltier seems like someone they're they're gonna use. Trethan, thank you for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we go on to our next caller? Uh yeah, a uh, couple of things. I a uh, quick shout out to Fabu. Like, dude, listening to you like talk about this topic, like absolutely like so many things I didn't even think about, like the support stuff. So really awesome. Can't wait to listen to the rest of the episode. Okay, just a, and, just a, um, I was the one that asked if he should roll swap. Okay, that wasn't a. I brought the topic up. I get true. credit for that. J no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and just in general, like, uh, shout out to you guys constantly doing this during, uh, you know, the whole COVID situation. It's been really great listening to you guys every week, and it's just something that's consistent during a time of very inconsistent, weird things. So thank you so much. Well, I hope you remain a consistent listener, even when things become less consistent. Or more consistent. I will. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't. Everyone's keep paying attention, even when you can go out to the bars and the clubs. Okay, this is Monday night. You're not going to be doing anything else. Stay here. It's, Monday night. Date night. <laughs> it's Tuesday Insert afternoon that, in Australia. That image of that guy drinking alone in the corner. That that meme image and be like, they don't know that I could be watch. I forget what it is. You know what I'm talking about, right? Everybody. Yeah. Treatham, thank you for the call. We'll catch you next time. Of course. Thanks. Great meme reference, Mark. That was a good one. Shut the fuck up. You know. <laughs> All right. Thank you to Bigger Fudger Stronger, Sukasem, Dark Dark Tarconis, The Meek Freak, Laser Chicken for six months, and Kyle0808, 40 months of tier two. Really appreciate it. We are 30 six subs away from 2000 we're counting down to 2000 your subs are going to get us there your prime subs feel free to not spend money on the stream i i don't particularly think it's maybe worth it but uh you don't so nobody needs to prime subs are what i'm looking for and uh maybe you have them and i'm just sort of extending this sub conversation because mark is still not here with our next caller and whoopley with the 16 months there's a prime thank you very much Really appreciate it. Uh, there we go. Dairy Cat is here. Dairy Cat, you've been on the show before, right? I have, yeah. Recently, I think. Yeah, I think uh, last week. Yes. Remind me where you're calling from. From calling from Queensland, Australia. Queensland, Australia. Good to have another Aussie on. What do you want to talk about on the show? 
Uh, I actually had two topics that Mark said I could. I which could one ask, did but, Mark? Um, which one did Mark pull you for? I think it, it was the first words. one, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay, I'll start with maybe the first one then. Um, so it was about the MSI. I felt that um, the there's there's a lot of talk about blue side being um, a lot stronger than red side, um, at least from the the. Um, the playoffs or the, the semifinals and finals outcomes, but um, my, my my take was that I think a lot of teams aren't really utilizing red side to their full extent. I find that a lot of teams um, seem to be preferring picking comfort champs over counter picks. Like um, I think just as an example, I think Ellis mentioned that a number of, given the prevalence of uh, Leona and Nautilus as support in bot side, a lot of teams didn't pivot the. Morgana jungle to to bot side to counter that. Um, a lot of people didn't really counter Nar. I felt they went Jace, which uh, I think most games just went even, and then Nar actually outscaled into late game um, in terms of team fight usefulness. Um, mid lane, I, I guess, is pretty hard to counter, but again, a lot a lot of people went scaling there with just Victor. Um, so uh, yeah, I was I was wondering, you know, what was especially with Pabu having played at the tournament. Did you feel that? Um, teams weren't really fully utilizing it, red side or was there a hesitance to to go for counters over what what teams were like is this a uh, more com comfortable with is this a, a ls take because you mentioned ls i've noticed that more and more hotline league is becoming a place to arbitrate <laughs> ls takes somebody will call in and say i heard ls said this and this is no i was giving I was giving Alice as an example of teams not utilizing the morgue as a pivot point. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I also mentioned that I didn't feel like, for example, a lot of teams blinded Nah. I don't think it was punished uh, very often. I think maybe Amut was the only one that maybe did Wukong as a as a counter. And I, I think he only did that because he was already very comfortable on Wukong. Yeah. Um, I was just teasing. In jungle. Teasing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Pabu, what do you think? Were people underutilizing counter picks, and was red side underappreciated and underutilized? So uh, yes, counter picks were underutilized, but not because like people are bad. It's just because they're a bit shit. Like blue side is so broken, in my opinion. Um, like a lot of these champions are so hard to counter pick. Like for example, like Nah, try find a champion that is like actually playable into this thing. Like it's really hard to counter pick a lot of these things like Lee Sin for example try find a champion that punishes Lee Sin is borderline impossible like it it's so hard to actually make use of being able to pick second in a lot of these situations like for example Morgana into Leona I'm 100% sure that every pro at the event would tell you I want Leona over Morgana they would prefer the Leona lane every time there's 10 times more agency outside of lane and then even during the lane there's many ways that you can outplay and then like blue side you get choice of jungle champion which is almost always better than any else in the game because you get to pick like your favorite of the three junglers and like you can do one peer and you're comfortable like or your team's the rumble team and you get rumble and you're comfortable like a lot of these situations were so good and then like playing champions into kaisa was also hard because all these kaisa lanes would just kill like jinx thresh they would just die like you have to play varus farm Kench, and like i don't know it feels like counter picking at the moment it's just borderline impossible because so many champions are just so broken and then also on blue side you get two three which means you can slam your bot lane and so basically on red side because you can only pick one champion in after two three you have to pick part of your bot lane in one two in which case the enemy team gets counter pick or if you don't do that you can only pick half of your bot lane so like drafting around bot lane is really hard on red side while it's really easy on blue side and i think bot lane is like giga impactful at the moment so it's just way easier to get a draft that you're comfortable with on blue side as long as your solo laners are comfortable blinding champions and a lot of the solo lane blinds are really broken right now that bot lane point is a really interesting one that i hadn't thought as much about um and, and it's, it's probably a really good one uh given the pretty limited effective champ pool in the bot lane right now that feels like it exists you know Especially in the support position. I feel like maybe you have a little bit more flexibility if you want to splash into Jinx and stuff like that. But as soon as you start trying to break out of the three or four supports that feel meta right now, if, if, I don't know. It feels like a big drop-off. We saw Braum kind of rise in priority and stuff, but that also felt like a pretty specific uh, play style uh, thing for me about who they, they were playing against. Um, and I totally agree about the soul laner point about counterpicks just like not being insane right now. It's not like you're playing... Jax, Camille, 
you know, Aurelia, these like kind of super OP split pushers that then get hard countered by other split pushers and that take over the game and change how you play. Like all the strong picks right now that you're going to play largely, even if they lose lane are still going to be effective. Nar, you know, like the caller said, you can play Jace or excuse me. Yeah, but you can play Jace, but you can also play Wukong and like gank it and kill it a couple times. But then like Nar is still going to be relevant in a team fight. If he finds a fat flank and Nar is your team into the wall and it's like, well, then you're playing Jace and he's playing Nar. <laughs> or you're playing Lucian or something. And even then, a lot of these things are banned. Like, Lucian was banned 50 times in the tournament. It was the fourth most banned champion. You know, so, like, some of the, some of the counter picks aren't even easy to get to. Same with Lee Sin and a lot of stuff that they're all pretty safe. Um, I think it's part of the meta. Like, these things change back and forth uh, and how, how good they are. Like, Red Side during Worlds last year was actually really strong when people like Bin and... Uh, yeah, top lane counter pick was really OP in that event. Yeah, three six nine. Like all those guys were just like, I have to get counter picks so I can win, you know. And like, it just didn't feel that relevant this time around. And um, that that's definitely where my went my went first. But I think the bot lane point was a really good one too. Yeah, I was, I was curious about bot lane too because um, uh, a lot of people were memeing about um, Gala being a Kaiser one trick, and 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 actually, I think before. Um, semi-finals i actually did a quick look on on lolpedia about all the kaiser matches and i actually found out that if you count out gala's games um kaiser had a negative win rate and but but still in the in the mad lions games um i could see that kaiser was just super pi prior i think um one game kazi even picked uh kaiser into varus which i thought was pretty hard to lane into but, but maybe more useful late late game so um yeah, okay. All right. Mark, do you think we have enough time for his second question or take? I think so. It's a hard pivot, but... Okay, go. I think we can squeak it Go in. quick. We don't normally allow this. this you're, is... you're, it's a special treatment you're getting for some reason. Thank you so much. Uh, this is more of a question than I take. I just wanted to ask Pabu, um, how how has the dissolution of, of the OPL affected um, OCE and the ability for new talents to come up because i think a lot of people a lot of at least oc amateurs like that that i guess the since we don't count as um into the na import limit that there's i guess kind of that, that increased career progression but um the other question i had was like is it harder then for for talent to be noticed because like players like fbi and and fudge they 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 weren't picked up out of nowhere they both won domestically before moving to NA. So I was just wondering, um, yeah, is it? do you reckon it's easier or harder now for OC talent to get picked up? I mean, there's it. we just vacuumed up a ton of them and brought them to America. So I assume that opened up some spots on some uh, LCO teams. Uh, I would say that the dissolution of the LCO itself and like the, sorry, the dissolution of the OPL and the opening up of like OS players becoming uh, like able to play in NA was like a pretty big boon for Aussie players, right? It's way easier for us to get imported. But I don't think that the what happened with the LCO like has any influence on making it harder. I think that the like the industry has kind of corrected back to what the appropriate level of pay is here. And for a lot of players that means they can't commit full time. They don't have there's only there's one team with a gaming house in the league. Like for the most part, it's extremely hard to be super committed to esports and O's. And I think that is probably the driving factor behind it being like hard to get scouted now because unless you're literally 17 and still in your parents house like you can't play that much of the game you know you have to go to work you have to go to uni whatever like you have something else to do so compared to what it was two or three years ago it it's gonna be way harder for talent to come up but that's not because the opl disappeared and i think the opl disappearing and like coming back kind of opened up this nice like pathway for those players so that there's actually like before it was really hard to progress because you're in import and you're fighting against Korean players for a spot in NA. But now that's not no longer the case, right? So you can reasonably become like a North American amateur player fairly easily. So like the the pathway is good. It's just going to take a long time before the league can support that. Do you do you see like the work conditions and the salary um, improving moving forward to make 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 it easier for people to to commit to that career path if they want to? Uh, yes, but it will be very slow. Um, the viewership is not great here. The broadcast is good, but as I said, the viewership is not great. So like, just like a lot of the, a lot of the financials behind it aren't great. And a lot of players don't put much effort into being like, being out there. So while, yeah, while, while the sponsors aren't flowing in, it's going to suck for a while, but 
eventually when that comes back, like, I can see OS genuinely turning just into, like, this pool of players for North American amateur teams to Ewing from. Pabu is the unicorn. In the same call, he did a very analytical breakdown of red side versus blue side and impressed Mark with his thought process there. In that, in the same call, he also talked about how the industry has corrected salaries to where they should be for Oceania. I don't even know if pro players could even think about that in North America. They don't even think about anything uh, industry about the industry. That's a. I was really impressed with everything that just happened there. Um. Oh boy. Okay, Dairy Cat. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah. No, that was awesome. Thanks, Pablo. Okay. Somebody said, that "Make works. this guy the new host of Hotline League." Maybe when I retire. Uh, in thirty <laughs> what would years. Pablo, the mantle. What would you rather get imported for, Pablo? Do you would you rather get imported for being a jungler, being a coach, or being the next Travis Gafford? I mean, that one's obvious, of course. Why would I play when I can be Travis Gafford? But. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think. Uh-huh. I think if right now pro player salary is probably much better than being Travis Gafford. Uh, things have been going well for me lately, but uh, I don't know if I'm. Mm. I'm on that LCS level. I think what average salary this year is probably something like three fifty, four hundred. I don't know. Um, Holy shit! Yeah, I am. Uh, <laughs> I'm not on oh, that yeah. level. Now that's not necessarily saying that's what you know <laughs> Golden Guardians that. players are getting, yeah. but. Uh, whenever you're paying somebody millions and millions of dollars, when you have a couple of pros that are getting paid millions and millions of dollars, you're definitely uh, amping up that average a, a decent amount. Okay, Dairy Cat, think- anything you want to shout out before we move on to our next caller? Uh, sh- thanks to Pablo for coming on. That was awesome. I loved watching you guys. And um, shout out to my girlfriend, Sue Queen 1000. Check out a stream if you like K pop. And always thanks, Travis, Mark, and Alienware. Thank you so much for the call. We'll catch you next time. Cheers, bye. You were going to say something, Mark? I cut you off, sorry. I don't remember. Oh, I think I was going to say about mean versus median. Because oh, yeah. uh, if you start chopping off the top and chopping off the bottom, you might end up in a very different place than if you took the mean. Right. But I don't know. Nowadays, there's there's a decent amount of pro players that are getting paid the minimum, so I'm sure that skews it downwards a lot, too. Who knows? Yeah. All right. You can say. Uh, Mark is off to grab our next caller. Thank you to Paradox Pope for the Prime. Very much appreciate it. What time is it there, Pabu? Uh, it's one twenty-three p.m. One twenty-three. All right. How are you? How's your sleep schedule been? Um, I had a nap before this because I woke up at about three a.m. Um, being in the hotel definitely has sent me for a loop. I think I went to sleep at like three forty, three fifty p.m. Jesus. So. It's almost my nighttime, I guess. Oh boy, Lion Nation uh, here. I got my PC. Oh, what were so, you say? I, was, I got my PC now, so I can actually play the game. So I'm gonna have to fix my sleep schedule so I can play the game. Nice. Lion Nation is here. Lion Nation, where are you calling from? Seattle, Washington. Seattle, Washington. What do you want to talk about on the show? I have a kind of a question for discussion about the overall state of League of Legends and kind of where we are here in 2020, 2021. Um, having just watched MSI Finals, LCK versus LPL. Um, and I think we're a very young sport, and so there's a lot of room for growth, and there's all these analysts with opinions about kind of where we're headed and things that should be done differently from itemization and draft and meta, whatever. Um, and so I guess my question is, like, as League made forward strategical progress over the course of the last, let's say, like, three or four years. I think everyone would agree, probably, that it's better than it was in, like, season two. Um, But, like, I guess I watched the MSI Finals, and being the, I don't know, gold to 80 carry pleb that I am, I don't know how valid this is, but I guess I felt like the level of play was fairly fairly low. We saw a lot of mistakes um, from... Uh, I don't know, I was just like watching, I don't know, ghosts like into team fight and barrel int all the time. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Where are we? Have we made progress? And do we feel good about, about so, the sorry, progress is the, we've made? Is the question sort of like the design of the game? Or do you think like... No, I mean, people, like, people playing. Like, people has playing. the overall level of skill increased? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, I don't... It certainly doesn't feel like it. I don't know. I'm really curious about Pablo and Mark on this because 
I think that's one thing people have said about MSI is that there's just a lot of weird shit happening. And I don't know if that's a factor of the meta or if it's just a factor of, like, I don't know, the G2s of the world. Not I don't know. Uh, but I, I'm i curious. Let's or just add, like, and why? Like, if, if not, then why? <laughs> why have we made progress? Mark, why don't, we've been thrown to Pabu first a lot, so how about you, you take, tackle this? Did Super Bowl in 2019 showcase a higher level of skill than in the Super Bowl in 2004? Did the 13 to 3 victory by the Patriots <laughs> was that better than the 32 to 29 win by the Patriots in 2004? Who the fuck knows? And and it's it's <laughs> almost a bit of a ridiculous question. Uh, is it though? The, the point I feel is, like, don't you? I mean, when you have people that are in the finals that are yes. inting a ton, like you can at least gauge whether or not that's good play. Really? Because back in the day, the Korean teams could buy two thousand wards and ward up your whole jungle and never make a fucking mistake. That was a higher level of play than like having to actually weigh risk reward and stuff and play aggressive nowadays, where vision doesn't just totally litter the map when you're ahead. I don't know. Yeah. Is that is that a higher <laughs> level of play? I'm I'm down your your alley, Mark. I think that like, of course, this event I think was a bit uncharacteristic, and I think there was a lot of like really shitty mistakes that aren't like normal. Like like Barrel, for example, is just like like running it down right for for literally no reason. But the game right now, especially with the way that it's been balanced, rewards like extreme aggression. And before it was like your deploys would take a long time. You would. Control the midwave, set up vision. Control the midwave, sit in the jungle. Control the midwave, dive the sideline. Now it's just midwave dive. Like it's just one step. So everything happens so fast and so quickly, and so like you punish a lot more mistakes, but then also you get challenged on a lot more things. So you have opportunities to make mistakes. And like a lot of the meta right now as well is you're playing Kaisen Nautilus versus Tristana Leona. Like before bot lane is like I don't know fucking like Varus Morgana versus like. Siva Yumi, like that, it, it, it's so much easier for people to die right now, and the game rewards moving for these aggressive players. The players are also going to look worse because they're dying to it. I uh, yeah, and then and I, well, also Drake ahead. meta is like Drake meta just means you have to ram heads in front of the dragon for twenty minutes. So like uh, the fact that you always have to team fight over a specific objective kind of kills some strategic diversity because. Like, lane assignments becomes a lot less relevant. Yeah, and I think, um, like, the game itself changes a ton, uh, like we're talking about. And I, I think, you know, I made the case even in the hot tub streams, like, I didn't feel like this was the most dominant group of teams assembled. You know, like, I don't think that this RNG and this Dom Juan and this Mad Lions was necessarily better than the 2019 representatives, uh, you know, where you had G2, SKT, and IG. You know, like, I thought that those were three pretty insane teams, and that MSI was nuts. Uh, but I don't think that this is, like, a negative take about the entire e ecosystem and industry of, you know, the, the League of Legends world. I just think that sometimes teams have different peaks and valleys, and, like, what you see at a tournament is, is going to have some level of var variability no matter what. I left out TL. I mean, you can argue TL versus C9. I think that's a closer one. But like, I would, I would very heavily argue about 2019's pool of teams compared to this one's. Uh, you know, if we really got into the nitty gritty. But either way, there's some level of variability no matter what. And I don't think you know that because it's lower here. It doesn't mean like teams got stupider or worse at League of Legends. I think you know, just these things tend to happen. The same way I would argue, I don't think that offense got worse in 2019. NFL championship because the Ram only scored three points, you know, like, I think that's just like what happened that year and the next year will be better or worse or whatever. Um, and I think, uh, to that point, you know, the game also has so many more changes than things. When you look at traditional sports, like the prevalence of three point shooting and finishes at the rim, like the mid game has kind of died and like, you can go into all the changes that have happened and like stuff like that. You can go into like for pro football, why ex passing has exploded. Our, our NFL offense is just suddenly so fucking nuts now. It's like, well, maybe, but they also got rid of the ability to blow someone's head off when they cross the, the mid midfield, you know, like, of course, people are going to catch... You could just blow people's heads off? You you could fucking... You could obliterate people over the middle of the field. If they if they were looking at the ball and not you come for their head, you would lose your head, all right? And nowadays, you that can't do that. Really for good violent. reason, because... 
because they're not trying to give everyone concussions and you know it, it's it's a good change but like the things change and like as a result how the game looks changes and what's good in the meta changes and, and like all these things can change um and so like to that point you know like pabu was saying things are like bloodier now there it's more explosive in how how people fight if if scaling comps come back if lots of front to back comes back and it's team fights and you know uh 80 carries are gods again i mean they're still pretty strong let's be real but but you know like it's literally like to protect the 80 carry team comps like those are a lot cleaner because it's just like you you just hit the guy in front of you um wouldn't you say that though there's there's more i mean like football is what like 100 years old basketball is like i don't know 70 years old or something like that i feel like shouldn't there be more room to grow for a sport that's only about 10 years old i mean yeah of course and i think we have grown if you want to talk about industry standards like 2014 lpl was a mess compared to nowadays where it's it's very professional there was there was a time less than a decade ago where it was like the billionaire playboy club who like everyone just bought teams because it was the hip cool thing to do for young billionaire sons and now it's like a legitimate industry you know like th that has leveled up uh, i mean to the level of play though i mean like right uh, there's more to discover about the game and to learn about this how to play the game and the strategy because because it's so much younger and less developed I mean, also the other thing I would add is like, if you look at the Olympics, every every Olympics, people break world records. Like every time the swimmers get faster and the racers get faster. Um, and I guess I don't feel like, I don't know that that's happening in league. And I guess I find it concerning as a viewer because it, I wanna watch people like become great. And I think it's- um, How much of that is people and how much of that is the technology? You know, those swimsuits they wear nowadays have like negative fucking friction or some insane shit. Those are banned. Those are illegal. Oh, they're now banned. they're illegal. Weren't they? Weren't they allowed for a little bit? They were allowed, and all the records got immediately yeah, broken. And, and, and all those skis get longer, and like they change how good they are going downhill. And there's like negative friction on the skis now, and like I like to say, the, I love the, the, the Alienware. The shoes don't wear anything. Alienware producing a negative friction mouse soon. Uh, that's going to be really <laughs> exciting. We're I don't know. For Obviously, some record breaking there. Training gets better. Usain Bolt's nuts. You know, like I don't want to. I don't want to take all that stuff down. But like, um, yeah. But also those. Like, how much has running changed in the last two thousand years versus, uh, say, League of Legends in six months? What do you think's changed more? That's true. The, 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 the sport of running or the fucking patch well, notes I also, that come out I'm every two curious, weeks? Mark and and Pabu, do you do you guys think like we not to go too far down the rabbit hole here, but it seems like it's kind of hard to train better in league because Riot provides so few ways to train better, right? Like we've talked a lot about how difficult it is to set up like, oh, we want to run Baron fights today because they just don't have a system in place where you can actually build that out. Like it, it feels like there are probably a lot of ways in traditional sports to level up specific and targeted things versus in league where there's just not as much opportunity to really like improve certain aspects of the game i mean i i definitely think that's an issue uh in terms of like hitting peak quality competition um but that's that's more about compared comparing two different issues because in league of legends league, they, they've never had that so like when you start saying how does 2016 level compare to 2021 or even two years yeah i was just thinking about like setting records and stuff like that right like in a way, the a lot of these folks have, and a lot of these sports, they've figured out ways to like tackle specific, very specific aspects of the of the sport, break it down, get better at these specific things. They build technology, like what assist. I assume there's like a lot yeah, of hardware it, and things you can it, do to try to like practice certain aspects or whatever. Like for for sure, like that is an issue. But like consider this: imagine you're a swimmer, and then two weeks you qualify for the Olympics doing one technique of swimming. And then they're like, all right, breaststroke is dead. Now you have to swim backwards, but only use your feet. You know, that's what Rumble Jungle was. What the fuck was that? Who was who was ready for that? You know, before Worlds. The Borgata before, before, as well. Uh, yeah, you yeah. know, like they were just like, eh, fuck chem tank, fuck, fuck these tanky engagers. Now you swim uh, with only your tongue. 
go for it. Let's see what records get broken this time, bitches. Let's go. You know, like that. That's kind of what what league players put up with when when they compete. Is like you just don't know what you, what you're competing in two months from now. How are you going to train for two months from now? Yeah. I was gonna say, um, back on the like the being able to like drill shit. I think that that is like pretty problematic. But also something that I got told by Korean players who came to us is that Korean vod reviews largely consist of them talking about how they take fights. That is 95% of the VOD review. Macro is not that important because, well, one, they get, like, personal coaches who would tell them that, but also it's kind of expected that you know what you should have done in terms of the way that you played the map. But they just talk together to get, like, on the same page about how they take fights and how they do things inside of these, like, specific moments. So they kind of try and move down that that alley of like getting better at the way that they take fights because it's hard for them to drill it right you can't just practice it but they always talk about it and that's like their focus is becoming better at that kind of thing um i think it's interesting compared to what other regions will do, do you right. think what, what do we do in north america mark uh do we do that i don't know we talk about communications <laughs> if you're going off what, what media will tell you about it or some of the other people okay well uh, hey, also, I wanted to loop back. Oh, go ahead. If, if we have time, yeah, I wanted yeah, to sure. say that I, I think that the level of play is far better than people think it is. Um, yeah. But it's just in ways that you can't tell. Like for example, you play against RNG, the way that they play out fights and the, the the five seconds before they fight is fucking insane. Like you can't get a good flank on these cunts. Like you can't like that. Like you can't do anything. Like it feels so hard to fight against them, and they. They take the fight so well, they're standing in the right spots, they drop wards like 10 seconds before the fight in all the right spots to screw your composition over. Like, the way that they play out these scenarios is so good, and it just doesn't get noticed because when they pick someone out, it looks like that guy's inting, but he's not. Like, RNG is just cracked. I, I, I totally agree about that point too, where like League is very much a zero-sum game where... Uh, people who look good are almost inherently always making the other person look dumb. It, it's very hard to to do one and the other. Whereas, like in basketball, like someone hits like this nasty fadeaway jumper, everyone's like, "Oh, that was such sick offense," and the defense was pretty good too. But like the way, if you took the way people talk about League of Legends players and put it in basketball, everyone would just be like, "Look at that fucking idiot not close out properly. He should have raised his hand two inches higher and like." you know, suddenly done this other thing mechanically better to, like, get an extra inch on his jump. And you're like, yeah, I guess. That was also just a nasty shot. You know, like, that was actually just a sick engage. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like uh, because League is so, like, pulled back from and you can really observe everything, it's it's a lot easier to nitpick the mistake. Not, not to mention there's just, I think, I think in esports in general, we we have a much bigger business on nitpicking mistakes. I, I could be wrong. I mean, I don't follow traditional sports as much, but just like with co streams, with I don't know a lot of the the culture around it, I feel like there's just a, a pretty big push to to really harp on people for their their mistakes. Am I wrong, Mark? Is it is it just as aggressive in traditional sports? I think a lot about commentators, right? What happened? I just lost audio from you guys. What can the you, fuck? Can you hear us back again? Can you clear my finish my point out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't hear anything after we, I We heard talking. you. We heard you. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Discord losing its mind with our oceanic uh, friend connection. Probably spent it for a loop. Yeah. I, I was just uh, asking Mark. I was I was suggesting, Mark, that I feel like in, in eSports in general, but but at least in League as well, there's a the business is oftentimes much more oriented around pointing out mistakes and really harping on them than what I've seen in traditional sports. Like, obviously, we'll do a slow replay and be like, oh, that sucked. But, like, on co-streams and in, like, analysis videos and on Twitter and Reddit and all this stuff, I feel like the people just go hard and hard and hard. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just as bad in traditional sports. Um, I think yes and no. I mean, everyone, there's there's a lot of like shit talk in that kind of way and like people say really dumb shit. Like you can go on ESPN and hear LeBron lose a finals and then Skip Bayless will be like, he didn't want it enough. You know, he just didn't care enough. And yeah. like, it's there's a lot of trash trash takes out there too i don't i don't mean to say that professional but we, we, we call people brain dead i feel like a lot and i don't know does that happen as much in traditional sports what a brain yeah. dead play yeah um, I, I i think um i would say it's it's more the community's opinion in some ways maybe i'm wrong you know like I, i've been a fan of sports a long time but 
and I always felt like like people trash their teams all the time, but I felt like by the time you kind of got to the finals and stuff, and like most people didn't quite have that. I mean, you you would flame people for choking. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just a feeling. But I, I I didn't feel like I people always got criticized quite as heavily. But but I mean, obviously, they still get criticized a lot. I don't mean to say they don't get criticized heavily in just sports because they obviously do. But I think the the manner of it. Just I don't know why it's. I would have to think more about exactly what strikes me different. Yeah. The the creativity of the internet, perhaps. Uh, Lion Maybe Nation. That's what it is. Lion Nation. Thanks so much for the call. Where do you? Uh, what do you want to shout out as we uh, move on to our next caller? Yeah, shout out uh, Alienware and Game Fuel, and uh, in particular, shout out uh, Rift Reaction. Your new. You can catch your new podcast on Spotify. Everybody in chat, you should watch it. And most of all, actually, shout out Emily Rand, who I think is like one of the most awesome personalities we have in league right now, and like doesn't get the credit she deserves. So, I, I love you, Travis, but I feel like I'm listening for her, and she's awesome. No, I I agree. I am lucky to be, to ha- especially on weeks like during MSI and stuff. She's she's definitely carrying me on a lot of the, the analysis on that show. But yeah, thank you for the shout out, and uh, and we'll catch you next time. All right, thanks for taking me. Yeah, see you. All right. If anybody would like to sub to the channel, that would be great because we're going to lose all revenue opportunities on YouTube after Pabu's Aussie slip uh, during that conversation and the, demonet- <laughs> the demonetization that will come with it. This is a uh, find it in the VOD and mute it. dude. We're taking a, we're taking a hit. All right. Uh, you want to grab the next caller, Mark? Yeah. Uh, Mackie, thank you for the five months sub. Really appreciate it. Can't you just censor it? Can't you just mute it with a beep? Yeah, but the problem is it gets it gets the show up so much later, and I do try to get it up early in the morning because people that listen to it get really disappointed whenever they they can't have it in time. And just just the little logistics. I it's the difference between just uploading the video straight versus like bringing it into Premiere, exporting it, re- having to re-upload it, and all that stuff for like a two hour plus video. It's it's a lot. Rico is here. Rico, where are you call, calling from? New York City as always. New York City as always. A lot of a lot of callers from that area tonight. Uh, what do you want to talk about on the show? Um, what I want to talk about is um, an article that recently came out uh, with BRTT talking about how uh, nobody didn't want to screw with them at all during MSI. Uh, okay. Uh, so, what's your elaboration on it? Uh, I think it's pretty unfair that uh, lower lower tier um, teams don't get a chance to kind of uh, improve um, during like an international um, event and that they're kind of just, you know, left for dead and just, you know, it's just not fair. Like, you have all these great teams, you shouldn't be taking them lightly just because they come from a lower tier region to be given a chance and honestly I think uh, uh, Pain Gaming should have uh, thrown some shade. Uh, being rejected to play with teams like um, PSG or uh, Mad Lines. Let me tell you about a little team called Albus Knox Luna, a team that could never get any scrims and then used that to fuel their rage at Worlds 2016. No, uh, probably why were you guys such dicks you win the scrim pain? What's up with that, man? Um, I was too busy scrimming Cloud9 and Dam1, I guess, so a bit yeah. unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, let's throw it to you then, Fabu. First off, how hard is it in your experience, and maybe from what you know, for the minor region teams to get scrims? I don't know if this is something you you did struggle with in the the group stage or beforehand, and and any idea why pain it was? Do you think there's a, a world here where pain was singled out? Because it sounds like Rico was sort of saying like, oh, they were the team that couldn't get scrims. Theoretically, if there was another team that couldn't get scrims, these two teams could scrim each other. Yeah, um, well, I think being in Iceland, like, we we have access to EUS, so there's, like, all the ERL teams that they can scrim, so it's not like they can't get practice partners that are around their level. Um, so I think it's pretty disingenuous to insinuate that they couldn't have practiced against players that would have made them improve. But, of course, um, they wouldn't have gotten, like, top-tier scrims, right? Um, 
And so the best scrims that we got before Rumble Stage was Cloud9. Um, we had like Cloud9, DFM, um, like Wildcats, like all, all those, all that tier of teams, just like other minor region teams plus C9. Um, and we only started getting better scrims like after that because like everyone else just like wasn't there. So I think that maybe it was unfair and maybe the MSI teams were not fair to the um like like pain but specifically brtt was complaining about the rng and it's like it's a bit entitled to be like yes i want the rng scrims as a minor region team like come on man like it, it's rng um so i think that yes they yeah yes they would have been like denied like some really good scrims but like it's not like there wasn't people out there who would have played them and beat them i uh i I mean, I assume everyone wants to scrim with RNG, and so, like, you know, that's, what, 11 other teams probably hitting them up for two weeks of scrims, and they're obviously going to prioritize who they believe is to be the stronger team. So, and then you usually book scrims for the week. I mean, maybe it's it's probably more. I mean, that's that's in anything. I'm, I'm sure at international competition, you, you book for less time. How, how, how long did you book scrims for, Pabu? Was it like you booked a block, a day? Like a um, morning, we morning had, session it was, week. It was usually five games at like one or two p.m. And some teams were doing like a, th a, ga a block of three afterwards at like eight or nine. Um, but I had probably the first four or five days after we got there booked before we got there. So everything basically after that was just kind of the day or two before you could get booked. But yeah, the first yeah almost week was booked before anyone was there. Right. So. I mean, that makes sense to me that you don't have, like, fucking unlimited time to scrim everyone. You're, a team like RNG is going to scrim who they think is the best. So uh, I definitely don't think it's unfair of them to go, okay, we're not going to scrim all 11 teams. Let's let's start picking out the people we think are going to be good. Well, he uh, also said, uh, so the, the translation according to uh, win.gg, from the tweet was, it's incredible how the international teams interact with Brazilians on social media to gain engagement but they don't want to scrim with us at Worlds or at MSI. And I, I think, you know, love BRTT, love Brazilian fans, think Brazil's the best region in the world. They're amazing, and uh, they have the best fans. <laughs> but it's a, it's a little disingenuous, right? Because whenever, like, Portillo is running the Cloud9 Twitter account, he's not like, all right, fuck getting these guys scrims, but time for me to make some Brazil tweets. You know what I mean? It's like these are very separate aspects of the Positions. business it's not like jack walks in and is like listen listen mateus uh you gotta we can't tweet about brazil anymore or pain because um <clears throat> we're not screaming those guys and so it's just it would be very disingenuous of us to to do that uh i think, I think it's a little a little weird of a of a take i can kind of understand the frustration though because uh i'm not sure about who brazil can scrim but i think it's like fairly isolated um, it's not the same as us, but they definitely don't have as many practice partners as other teams. So, like, of course, it, it must feel like shit to, like, get to MSI and then be like, yes, this is my opportunity to improve. And then it's like, it feels like other teams are, like, taking that away from you. But I am for sure confident that there would have been opportunities for them to improve. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely one of those, like, your emotions are valid, but also this will probably never change <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Rico. We, we disagree. What, go ahead. What were you going to say? How do you guys feel if Riot decide to kind of uh, micromanage scrims? Like Riot will never having... micromanage scrims, my friend. It'll just they never happen. Never. That would be a shit show. Can you imagine? They can't even get their, their scheduling correct for these teams. How are they supposed to be able to schedule scrims for the, the teams? My, that's, a, that's a wild thing. I mean, also part of it is people stream scrim strategically. Like, that is part of the strategy at these events on, like, which teams you're not going to scrim, which teams you're going to. There's been times where teams have been locked out. Was was it last year when nobody wanted to scrim C9, Mark? I was trying to remember, like, FlyQuest or somebody started a uh, – a, there, there was a point in time. I'm trying to remember what it was. Anyway. I believe you. You're totally right. Yeah, for it was sure. like a whole thing, I remember, because I did I Yeah, did some yeah, yeah, around. for sure. Uh, but anyway, it's it's like part of the strategy around it, and like I don't think anyone is necessarily owed scrim time. I mean, figuring out how to manage that stuff and being a team that 
is a good scrim partner, I think, is, is as much on the teams as it is anybody. And it's not necessarily Riot's thing. So, I guess I guess that's where we're at, Rico. Sorry, I didn't mean to, to shut yeah. you down. No, maybe I did. No, it's fine. I just found it interesting in that, you know, like I said, I would have, uh, if I was the Twitter handler for Pain Game, you know, like, here, I got a million reasons why and just have their fans attack uh, Teen's Twitter account. Oh, Jesus. Yes, let's weaponize <clears throat> fans. Exactly. That'll get you scrims. Well, they're not getting them anyway, Mark. Rico, thanks so much for the call. Is there uh, <laughs> anything you want to say before we take a quick break? Uh, shout out to Game Fuel, Alienware, um, Earth React. Uh, shout out to my boys, Dizzy Dave, Big Booty Kim, Happy Turtles, Pink Domo, and Mr. Latern Crespley. Uh, have a dude, good night, guys. Fucking Dizzy Dave is a crazy dude. Fucking shout out to Dizzy Dave. Thanks, Rico. Peace. All right. First off, by the way, thank you for the people that are shouting out Rift Reaction, my show with Spotify. Uh, it is Rift Reaction, not Rift React, though. Just be careful when you're searching it up because. Uh, and I saw a bunch of people that liked the, you know, answered in the poll or uh, left a message in the Q and A. That stuff is very helpful, so I appreciate it. All right, we're gonna take a quick break to talk about Game Fuel. This, by the way, I know people are used to seeing me with the Charged Cherry Burst. This is the Charged Orange Storm flavor. Uh, highly recommend. Mark recently got a new ship. Mark, did you you got your shipment, right? Should yep. Shipment? Okay. I got all piled up right next to me. I stopped putting it in the closet. I got four stacks right they here. They sent you four? Yes. Oh, boy. So I have, well, I think they're 20, 24 packs. Yeah, you should be good no, for a while packs? then. Yes. I don't know. What's in here? There's, I think, I think there's 12. 12, yeah. I got 48 of these puppies to get through. Okay. Well, good luck. I wouldn't recommend drinking them all at once. Uh, thanks to, to Gayfield for sponsoring the show. Really appreciate it. You, wait, can I can I promote this yet? I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to promote it because I'm pretty sure I can. Uh, and I don't think that I will have another chance to promote it before it happens. So I'm just pulling this up to make sure that the timing on it is correct. Where is it? Where is it? Okay. N next Monday from 4 to 6 Eastern, which is 1 to 3 Pacific. Because CLG is sponsored by GameFuel and because I am sponsored by GameFuel, I will be streaming with one of their streamers, Nemo, and a head-to-head -head ARAM showdown. This is on the 31st. Uh, we're going to be drafting players from each game so that the fans can have and viewers can have uh, be part of this. It's like a community ARAM event. And uh, we're going to be gifting a ton of cases out to people. So if you want to win some game fuel, this is your chance. And they're also giving away a game fuel mini fridge to the winner of game five. I'm a little worried uh, for those that, that do this because uh, if you win the game fuel fridge, just be ready. This thing is huge. I have it back there. It's kind of out of focus, but uh, they say mini fridge. And, uh, you know, all respect to game field, but this is a, I wouldn't, it's a fridge it, fridge. It's certainly not like a kitchen fridge, but it is, it is substantial. So just be ready to, uh, to do that. Anyway, you can go check this out on uh, Monday. I'll be tweeting about it. So if, if you miss it, um, if you, if you forget about it between now and then hopefully you'll check it out on my Twitter, but, uh, thanks to game field for setting this up. It'll be a fun little show. And you guys can help me please carry me. Cause I, uh, Nemo is going to be significantly better than me, so I definitely need my crew to to do this. How do we sign up? I think you just need to be there the day of. There'll be more. Actually, I'm glad you asked. That's to be revealed at a later time. It's a secret. I totally know what it is right now, but I that's a secret. Anyway, thanks to Gamefield for sponsoring the show. Really appreciate them. Uh, check out the description below for links and codes on how to purchase and save on your Gamefield. Supporting us. It's very helpful. All right. We've got one last call. Pabu's fading. Wait, you took a nap. Actually, you're not fading. You're good now, right? Didn't you say it's getting go. close to your nighttime, though? Well, it's 1.55 p.m., but, like, I'll be fine. Okay. Well, we just need to get through this one caller, and then you can you can crash. Mark is grabbing them. Uh, oh, Clock Cruncher. Thank you for gifting the 10 subs. That was awesome. Really appreciate it. We are now... 22 subs away from 2k 
Don't know if we're going to hit it, but Etherealize, thank you for the Prime. And Flick Nicoma, thank you for the 13 months. Really appreciate it. And our caller is we're in here. the channel, and it's Zemelkai. Did I say that correct? Did. I did. What? You're kind of um, quiet. Oh, I can try and dumb myself up. Okay, I think that I think uh, that's good. Um, just a little closer to the microphone should should do it. Uh, remind okay. everyone where you're calling from. Uh, I'm calling from uh, Oxford, UK. And what time is uh, it in Oxford, UK? It is nearly five a.m. <laughs> My God. Well, I'm glad Mark made you wait all the way to the end of the show because he's a a brutal, terrible person. I'm trying to keep them up until sunrise. I'm helping. How does that help? I mean, to be fair, also the take that Mark chose me for, I did come up with at four a.m. So. Okay. Well. Uh, Zamelkai, what is your take? Yeah. Okay, so it's less a take, more a question, but like. Uh, and this is for Pabu. Um, so, in a hypothetical universe where you and the rest of Pentanet, like coaching staff, everyone, could go to any region and, like, money is no issue. Like, you know, you don't have to worry about, like, you'll get, like, scrim partners, like, none of the, like, practicality side. Literally just the, like, pick a region to go to. Which region would you want to go play in? Like, LEC, LCK. Like, your whole team with you. Well, if I was going to pick for, like, out of game, I would want to go to probably Berlin and go play in LEC. But I think if it was pure, like, gameplay, I think it's China, of course. Like, the way that LPL plays League of Legends is so much fun. Like, it's extremely challenging, of course, because you have to do so many things correctly. But most of all, I just think that it's fun that you get to... Like, you're, you're kind of, like, tested as a player at all points of the game. At, at, at no point can you, like, rest on your laurels and, like, scale or, you know, rely on a certain thing. You have to be good, and you have to play fast, and you have to punish the enemy team, because if you don't punish them, they'll punish you on their windows. So, I think that getting to play in a region like that is not only extremely beneficial to becoming a much better player, it's also just a more fun way to play the game. Have you seen Travis's face when you said Berlin? You see I was so just... confused. Fold, you said folded inwards, out. and he just. You said for out of, out of game reasons. Yeah, I've never been to Berlin, but okay, I okay. Let to me be tell you. In Europe. Pick Los Angeles, my friend. First off, pick LA. Before yeah. we even get to the LA part, did you not hear what I said earlier? Like the average salary this year is so like three fifty to four fifty. All right. I I wiped it from my mind. I can tell I you, it's not that at it. LEC, buddy. All right. Secondly, don't pick Berlin. It's just, it's it's the what like there are times where they have good weather, but there's a reason they're all coming over here, and uh, it's it's not because Berlin's such a better place to live than L.A. Um, look, I'm not saying America's great. We have a lot of problems, uh, but I I do think it's crazy to me if if you would you would choose to. Think about your teammates, all right? Like, unless maybe you're doing this as a punishment <laughs> to them. I'm not sure, but uh, it's, I don't know. You, what, is your, what is your impression of Berlin? What do you think of Berlin? Um, I can maybe talk about Berlin specifically, but I think just, like, Europe in general and, like, LEC in general just kind of, like, has, like, a big draw for me. Like, being a part of that ecosystem is kind of, like, very alluring, right? And I don't know much about Berlin, but Germany's always sound cracked. But like, maybe it's not. Maybe maybe LA is just the play. Um, I can definitely see it. I what? I just, what's the I allure just... of LEC? I'm curious. Uh, I'm not trying to argue with you at this point in time. I'm mostly having fun. But I I am curious if there's a world where like what? Well, tell me what what what's the allure of the LEC ecosystem? Um, I just think that that's a lot less roadblocks. Um, in North America, I mean, everyone like says a lot of things, but I just think that the the ease of transitioning up practice partners and then also becoming like a really good team just seems easier in Europe. And becoming the best player you can be seems easier in Europe than it is in North America. You mean like you're um, be the best player you can be internationally? Yes. But you just wouldn't that um, be reasons to pick LPL? Like that's in game reasons. Those are LPL. That's why you'd go with LPL, right? I, I yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, okay. You're right on that front for sure. 
Your um, argument's falling yeah, apart but, in front of you, Pabu, all right? Falling <laughs> apart. But, You're in shambles. But if we, if we sucked and we were going to, like, be, I, I guess... Out of the all, all the out of game stuff being out of the picture is like. Let's say you know uh, you have to go to one of these regions, but you're always going to be the worst team in that region. Uh, Jesus, Travis is <laughs> looking for anything to, to 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 make you admit that you want to come. No, to no, LA. no, I'm just saying. Like, I'm just saying. Okay, like, it, like oh, that, I would that, love to go to LA. It sounds sounds absolutely wonderful, but yeah, no, I guess I guess LPL is just the play, and then if we want to go to the beach, we can go to LA. <laughs> I, I mean, because because the thing is, yeah, like LPL is obviously the best for like straight up talent, like development, you could argue, and like the skill of the teams that you're competing against. But at least with EU, you you get like, OK, most people are still speaking English in, in solo queue and it's probably more fun and more competitive than L.A., which is like technically an in-game reason. But yeah, you're just it's still an, talking it's about like enjoyment. I think. No, I agree. LAC is the best of both worlds. Like that's you're just like a slider where you like. There's with for very little com well not say that Shanghai is uncomfortable or something like that but like you know obviously very different culture very different situation you're in LPL but you're gonna have like the best competitive experience then on the other end of the spectrum you know just the casual you're retiring early you're collecting those checks you're eating some great food you're sitting on the beach hanging out with celebrities because you know like that's the celebrity culture in the LCS I believe I, f I don't even remember that where that meme comes from now but I know it's great um, that that's great. And then smack dab in the middle, I feel like LEC gives you the sort of the best of both worlds. What you I, disagree, I, Pablo? I feel like they're, no, they're they're all just like it's like you have this like spectrum, right? And then you just have O's. It's just like down here somewhere, like it's on a different all, axis. All it's, yeah, it's it's just it's not the same ball game. Like it just I don't know. Everything sounds wonderful, honestly. If anything is better than this, is that, is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? I'm not, I, I'm not sure I can go on record with that being my position, but you can <laughs> make make what you wish of what I've said. Oh, oh boy. Um, we love Oceania. Okay, I'm not trying to show on them. Zemelka, is that that uh, answer your question? It does. I, it's also kind of where I thought that answer would check out. Um. But like, as an LEC fan, it's nice to be validated. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Um, like I, like I'm not a pro player, but if I were, LPL would definitely be the place to play. Like, the whole region's crack. Worlds is going to be terrifying. <laughs> well, not just that, but I think that's also just cool. I mean, they their esports ecosystem is like ten times the size of everybody else's, right? Like arenas in different cities you get these big big audiences all the time and I, I i think it is you know they're basically at the point where i think all the other regions wish they were for their their esport ecosystem so i i can i can certainly respect that uh zimelka i thank you so much for the call anything you want to shout out before we uh wind down the show uh yeah can i i uh shout out to rift reaction um, unironically, like, it's it's a really nice length in that I literally downloaded it and then listened to the whole thing whilst doing my shopping. And, like, I appreciate that, like, short form for that, because, like, it's really good. Um, uh, also, shout out to uh, my Discord server with all of my friends called Ramp Vale. Like, it's a private thing, but those guys are cool and finally uh get your kappa prides out gay rights thank you so much Zamalkai, for the call really appreciate it thank you very much have a nice evening See you. i love the people shouting at rift reaction if you want to listen to mark on both this show and his show you have to listen to like two actually this week's episode was short you guys did a short one this week you usually have to listen to three and a half hours of content. I'm asking you for just two and a half hours of content. All right? That's all I'm saying. Rift reactions to the dive. All right? Listen to Hotline League no matter what. I expected some sort of, Speaking of reactions, I expected some sort of reaction out of Mark to all this, but he's just chilling. He's just big chilling. All right. Well, whatever. Glad... It, 
My point made exactly. All right. On on my other show, we have reactions. I can't even get Mark to have a reaction on this show. Mark, what do you what do you want to what do you, what do you want to plug? What do you want to shout out? Is the show over? <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> uh, I don't want to plug anything. Really? Uh, no, I I don't think I've done anything worth plugging in a hot minute. Certainly not this show. Mark, do you? I'll just ask you right now on the public record. Do you want to do some uh, some videos with me? I was thinking like, so this week I'll probably release my like salary video after all this time. Do you want to do a video where like one is like the video, the next video is us talking about it or something? Or are you just taking the whole week off? Uh, I'm probably taking the week off. Okay. What are you going to do with that um, time? I don't know. Okay. It's not well, I, it sounds like you're really busy, so I understand why you don't want to do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm super busy. Dude. Just got no time for anything. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. But I'd love to talk about it on the next episode of Hotline Lee. Okay, very good. Fair enough. We'll do that. Paulu, what do you want to shout? Where, where can do. people find you? What do you want to promote? And are you going to be sane in 10 days once you escape your quarantine? Um, probably not, but you can find me at twitter.com slash pub22. Um, most of my other things will be up there. Um, I wanted to shout out, you know, my, my good, my good old organization from Perth, uh, pentanet.gg. Um, I was like a bit worried about this year, but the fact that I got to play and go to MSI and have such a wonderful experience is like totally like on their back. So I'm pretty like happy that it's all panned out this way and it wouldn't have worked out that way without them. And then I don't have anyone else to shout out apart from, you know, Alienware. And then also my girlfriend, Eliza. Um, it's been a while. I've been away for what, like, it's going to be like five months, five, like, sorry, uh, five weeks by the time I get out of quarantine. So it's not too long, but it has been a while. And I can't wait to, you know, go spend some time with my girlfriend once I get out of here. Has she, like, stood outside the building and have you, like, waved at her from the window? Um, uh, We actually did discuss it but i'm 23 floors up and there's no road beneath me so uh it's a bit uh unfeasible oh really okay well what if uh she goes to one of the other buildings that is like she finds the 23rd floor in one of these other buildings and like waves at you i can see into the rooms in the building across the across the road so Do you know okay well i'm it, not trying to definitely you, so be i don't want to ask you more details but I'm pretty sure just a phone call is sufficient, Travis. Weirdo. <laughs> I'm just suggesting, you know, like romances. You know, the, you gotta, you gotta. The grand gestures that matter. Yes, exactly, exactly. Or if, something. Uh, like Mark, like Mark. What's the grand gesture you're doing for your for your anniversary? Uh, I bought some filet mignon. Cooked that up today. We had that for dinner. But we're going to uh, we're doing a big Disney World trip in summer because uh, our birthdays are a month from now as well. So we're kind of packing up a lot of anniversary birthday stuff and jamming it all into to Disney World. We're going all out on that trip. So there's going to be a week where we miss you from the... the de Wait, are you going to miss a hot... Like, how, are you going to be traveling on a Monday? Travis is coming apart at the seams. I think so. I need to check when my flight is again. I'm pretty sure it's like a Monday through Saturday trip. Didn't we've done one hotline league without you, right? Or we have never we never done one without you. No, you don't. Remember the Nate shot episode? I think it was Captain Flowers was had it, had to do it for me because I was also maybe doing something. I was doing something with Ashley. I think it might have been a, a thing. Was I thought it was you that was on whenever we we were like going in on him a lot. Was it, it just Captain it's, Flowers was the co-host? Like we were going in. On I him called in. I called in from a from a hotel. Okay. Well. Uh, boy, am I going to have to figure that one out? If everyone it tell us who you'd good. like to great. replace Mark for a week of Hotline League. Anyway, thanks so much, Pabu, uh, Mark, of course, uh, for joining me on this episode of Hotline League. If you'd like to watch live, we do these every Monday, 7 Pacific. Twitch chat, all spamming Pabu. Okay. We do these every Monday at 7 o'clock Pacific time. Did you mean to turn off your... Mark? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Hello. And I, uh, I have my cat on my lap, but... They are available on Spotify and other places, but uh, listening to them on Spotify uh, is great. And if, uh, if you haven't yet, please sub to the YouTube channel and maybe sub to the Twitch channel as well. And we will catch you next week for the first week of LCS.